Yo, what's going on, people? Back again with another footy talk. Hey, Monts, what are you telling me, bro? I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there, man. It's slowly but surely chipping over the finish line, getting through the international break, the dustiest of international breaks, but which international break isn't dusty, man? Here we are. What have you made of it? Have you been Have you been keeping up with the games or not really? Obviously, I watched both the England games. Um, I tuned into the Spain to the Spain game um, as well. I caught a few of the highlights. I saw obviously a few of the boys at Liverpool got a bit of GA, so I tuned into the highlights. But nothing ninety minutes pace that you know what I'm saying because again, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's international friendlies. It's not even like these are big boy qualifiers, but these are international friendlies, bro. Man, I hear just even though the England game didn't feel like a friendly, man, like Onana oh, trying to clamp take kneecaps out of place and that. But mm. so it's it's one of them ones where like I'll be real. When I watch international football, bro, sometimes I struggle to stay awake. Yeah, like, I don't. You, you, I don't feel. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. Big tournaments, a bit different in it, but my mind's in club football. You know, what I'm saying maybe for the Euros will be a bit different, but boy, I don't know. I didn't really. I'm. You're kind of looking at football just because it's football because it's there. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But international football has always been. It's always been boring, though. Like, always. And it's kind of supposed to be, though. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, international football is the most cagey football that you'll ever see, in it, And that's just what it is. It's cagey. It's disjointed. It's unpredictable. And that's why a lot of the time, yeah, it's not really that exciting, in it? But it's kind of not supposed to be, bro. Like, even in big tournaments, when you watch the World Cup, before the knockout stages, yeah, it's boring. Same with the Euros as well. Before it's elimination, it's kind of dead. The games are dead. It's a slower tempo. And it's like bo both teams don't want to lose. Isn't it? And that's just kind of what it is, bro. So I'll be real. Like, international football is like that, bro. But that's why I just go into games knowing that, yo, like, I'm not really going to be super entertained. But I thought the England game, especially the Belgium one, because both teams weren't really that great, I thought it was all right. I thought that was one of the better international games I've watched. Yeah, do you know what? That's what I mean when I said it didn't feel like a friendly. Like, it felt mm. like both teams wanted to win, kind of thing. Yeah. No, but 100%. I'm looking at it now, I'm going, was that probably better to watch? Great. But then, obviously, if you're one of your players gets injured, you're cussing. You're cussing no, like facts. It. Bro, it was so pointless, bro. I want to know why these games are played and why they're played when they are played because it's like this is the business end of the season bro like you said you don't want your players to be getting injured bro at the end of march bro when the league finishes in may like why are the friendlies now yeah this is what i'm saying like but i think because with international breaks here because before this one when was the last one what like november november was the last one that, that, that was the last because there was a big break, like, a, like there was no yeah, yeah. international football between them. So, obviously, one was bound to happen in it. I just feel like I, d I just feel like it's international duty, and I think a lot of man, a lot of players are still on the whole. Listen, I don't blame anyone for doing the patriotic when it comes to football, but when it's friendlies, bro, and you're at the business end of the mm. season for your club that pays your bills, the certain man don't really be getting dough for their international duty like that anyway. You know, what I'm yeah. saying it's more of a respect thing. But when it's international friendlies, cool, imagine you go for your international friendly, you do your knee in and you're done for the remainder of the season. You're a key player for your team and they don't win the league. Yeah. They're right. only going to go and get another guy to come and play your position. No, you're right. You're 100% right, bro. You're the keys you know to I mean? the city. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting the keys to the city. No, facts. Like, bro, like they put, um, there was something I saw on Instagram today and it was like, there's been eight players, bro. Eight players that have been pulled out of um the squad or been injured, yeah, that are meant to be playing in the Arsenal Man City game. Eight, bro, between both teams. That's crazy. Yeah, madness. Now, if both if both teams, yeah, have four men missing each year, it's a joke, you know. Do you know what I'm saying? It's an absolute joke. And it's like, it's unnecessary as well, bro. Like, the timing of these international breaks. Nah. Like, if the Arsenal Man City game isn't two teams, yeah, that are pretty much full strength, yeah, I'll be pissed off. I can't lie. I will be pissed off because that's a game that you want both teams to be fit and available. So there's no excuses. None whatsoever, bro. Man don't want to watch the game. And then both teams are saying, oh, but we had this player out, had that player out. This is effectively, yeah, like, 
it's one of them ones where this game is is so big. Like, it's a massive game on Sunday for these men. Like people, like Arsenal fans will, they'll try and talk down the importance of this game. But if they don't win this game, they can't be confident of winning the league. That's how big it is, bro. Like when Man United and Arsenal, when I was growing up and it was Man, U, Man United v Arsenal, yeah, for the title. If we won Arsenal, the league was ours, bro. Like we knew that. We knew we just had to beat them at their gaff. The league was ours. They knew if they could beat us at us, the league could be theirs as well, bro. Like they knew that. This is the importance of this game where it's like, if Arsenal are, are going to win this league, they have to beat Man City. They have to beat them. Do you know what's do you know what's crazy with the whole full strength thing? I just sorry, that 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 bit was stuck in my head for a second. I don't think Man City are going to be for one. I don't think City are going to be full strength. You know what I'm saying? Like Kanji's now been added to the injury list. I don't think mm. Stones. I think Walker has a chance, but again, I'm big on hamstring injuries. I've had a lot of them myself. If mm. you know when people when Sabo's like got his hamstring injury, man would tell him, "Yeah, man, it's fine. Why are you panicking? It'll be fine next week." I said, "Brother." Have you, you ever pulled hamstring? Have you ever done yeah. your hamstring, bro? You're not back in a mm. week. I don't care who's massaging your hairy thighs. You're not mm. back. You get it. You're not. You're not in a week. Do you want to do your other hamstring muscle imbalance, or do you want to, or do you want to do the same one again? Because that's what's going to happen mm. if you're running full pelt, especially for a man like Cole Walker who runs that fast and puts that much pressure on his hamstring on his on his thighs as he runs, bro. It's crazy. Like if anyone thinks after a week you're going to be playing. In the biggest game of the season, after tweaking your hamstring, you're mad. And Hamstrings are the worst, bro, and because they feel like they're better, and then you, yeah. you get out there, and then they go again, bro. Like that's what yeah. hamstrings do, bro. Yeah. Like hamstrings are the worst. And that's and that's obvious. As a bro, me personally, I've suffered from multiple hamstring injuries. Yeah, so like I know that, and it, it doesn't even have to be at the highest level. As you said, you can feel like you're completely fine and you've done everything you needed to do, but you're but as soon as you go, long day. It's a psychological thing. And it's not like Carl Walker's coming up against winners who don't really want to run against him. He's coming up against Martin Martinelli, who's last to can run. A couple of weeks later, who's he coming up against? Finney Jr. On that mm. hamstring. <laughs> yeah, you man are funny, man. You man are funny. Yeah, Come it's crazy, up. bro. I can't lie. It's not looking... Yeah, it's, it's not looking amazing. But the one thing about Man City, the one thing about um, Pep is that, bro, he's always got an antidote, blood. He, as long as John Stones yeah. is fit, they'll be fine, innit? That like even if he ends up playing Stones right back, we've seen it before. We've yeah. seen it before. So it's one of them ones where I'm interested to see how the game goes. Um, we kind of know how Arsenal are going to set up because they always set up the same way. So it's going to be interesting to see how Pep sets up and if Pep plays the way he normally plays or if he alters the way he plays to deal with his Arsenal team because Pep Pep's always got some sort of change or something up his sleeve, like always. Always in these games. The same with um the Madrid over two legs. It'll be interesting to see if he plays the way he usually plays or if he has something different for Real Madrid because Pep can always change it. So I think for City as well, the next what three weeks is gonna be massive, bro, for their season as well. It's gonna be massive for their season. You yeah. man have got Brighton again. It's your yeah. time, it's your time to prove that you're really you're really in this title race, blood. Like you have to make a statement because you lot go top if you win first. Yeah, this is this is. Do you know what it is? We play first, yeah, and I need a draw in it, just like how we drew City. Yeah, I'm looking at the fixture list. Brighton is tricky, but we should beat them at home. Then we have Sheffield United as well. That should be six points. No games, six points. And what that does is just kind of resets the momentum again for Liverpool. I'm going to keep it a buck as well. Like Liverpool aren't at their strongest, but we do have players coming back. The likes of Curtis Jones coming back. Do you know what I'm saying? The likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold back before the United game. The likes of Allison coming back. Even though, you know what? Keller has done his thing, by the way. I've got nothing bad to say on Keller, by the way. I was a bit worried, but he's done his thing. And yeah. obviously, um, there's someone else coming back. Jo uh, Diogo Jota, that's back as well. You know what I'm saying? That's three men where I can say, you know what? One of them can. One of them's a gunman. Trent's obviously Trent. And Allison obviously has the aura as well. So I can now, the guys that are playing in the Premier League now, you man can go play against at Atlanta. At Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you're not going to play no more games for the rest of the season. You're still going to see the likes of Bradley. You're still going to see the likes of um, Keller. You're going to see Clark. You're going to see these guys play against Atlanta. So it's not like they're, they're done for the season. Their football's finished. They're going to get minutes. And I still think Klopp's confident enough to give them a few Premier League minutes as well, especially with 
the pretty much games, let's be honest. Net, April's looking long for everyone. It's about three games. It's so it's three, it's three days, and then you've got another game. Every mm. three days, you're playing football. So there's gonna be uh there's gonna be space for rotation. So the main thing is right now, I know it's cliche to say, but the, I can't stress just get your three points and then think about the next one. Just get your three points because three points is I don't care how you get the three points. I'm, I'm probably sure I'm past that now. You think I'm with that? Oh, yeah, I need this. performance needs to be glitter of gold. Performance was amazing versus City. What did we get? A point. A point. Mm. I would have preferred yeah, this is the point of the season where you just yeah. need results. But do you think it's advantage Liverpool, though, Blood? when you look at your fixture list? 100%. 100%. It has it's to be. Liverpool. It's advantage Liverpool, but I'd say football ain't played on paper because, like, I'd say... There's certain teams that are their season's pretty much done by game week 32 because their players are thinking about the Euros. You know, they're not playing for nothing. Players are already on holiday. Last three games, they don't want to get injured. They gotta play for their national, they got a big tournament coming up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You wanna play the teams in like 12th to 8th. You wanna buck them, man. You don't like even though people will laugh at me of Everton, Everton away last day to stop us from in the league, that ain't gonna be easy. You know what I'm saying? Them men are going to be there to break legs. Reducers from minute one, Roy Keane settings. That's what them men are on. I'll never forget mm. when, when Arsenal went, when Arsenal went Goodison Park last year, not too far, like latter end of the season. Erdogan got the ball first two minutes. He got smoked from behind. They didn't see him for the rest of the game. Mm. I, didn't see, I didn't see him for the rest of the game. He tried to do the twink. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So there are going to be teams that are going to be battling out. I, I, I always say it like, you kind of don't really want the teams that are fighting for relegation. I'm not talking about the bottom three. I'm talking about the Nottingham Forests, the Everton's, those type of teams who are going to be a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Merseyside Derby for the final game. Well, the second, is, that the, is it the final game? I think we have Wolves the final game, but it's around the end of the season, isn't it? Mm. So I think, but I do think on paper, definitely favours us. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to run from responsibility, but I'm not going to say it's a bottle job if we don't win. Like, right now, it's anyone's game still. I'm not going to throw that out there. Two things going to be true, in it? Yeah, but why isn't it? What do you mean? If you don't win, why is it not a bottle job, bro? Like, you've been there before. Yeah, you've got the easiest run of fixtures, yeah? Like, bro, so your manager's lost. Why can't these man lock in and win? Because City, City's run of fixtures, I look at their team and it's, it's easy as well, man. It's Arsenal's fixtures who are a rip tapped in it. It's Arsenal's ones. I look at and go, oh, I don't know how you're getting through that. You know what I'm saying? I look yeah, at, I but look, hold on. Uh, don't you have more points than City now? As it stands, you have more points than City. One point. It's one point, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's one point, and they got to play Arsenal. So, yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yeah, but my point is, is that after Arsenal, City's fixtures. I back City to actually go win every game after. And I go through. I mean, City's fixtures. Go through the games after Arsenal. Apart from Tottenham away. But Tottenham away is still a dif difficult game. You got Tottenham away and Arsenal, bro. Yeah, we have, but we have Tottenham. We have Tottenham and Villa. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? We have to play Tottenham as well. So it's like, and we have to go to Old Trafford. People forget that we've got to go to Old Trafford. You know what I'm saying? You lot are going to do everything you can to stop us from winning the league. I still think we win that game. That's why I haven't mentioned it with the, top, with the Tottenham game. But I remember mm. two years ago, Tottenham come to Anfield and I'm thinking, yeah, go, let's let's wipe these man. You know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, we draw the game 1-1. One, one. We win every other game. We lose the game. We lose the title by a point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's not the losses I'm worried about, Rance. It's the draws, bro. The, you know this, the draws. Kill. Yeah, yeah, the draws are always the ones that kill you, bro. They're it's always dead. the ones that kill, kill you. And it's, it won't even good. be three, four draws. It's, it could be one draw. Yeah. One or two. You know what I'm saying? And it's not excuses. I'm just being realistic. You ask me who I think is going to win the league, I'll tell you Liverpool. I've been, I've been saying this since January. But right, cool. So to... Man City got Arsenal, Palace away, Tottenham away, Villa at home, Luton at home, Brighton away. What else have we got? There's raw. They've got two. Yeah, they got the Real Madrid fixtures as well. They got Chelsea at home. Oh, that's FA Cup as yeah. well. Yeah, cool. Um, Nottingham Forest away. Wolves at home. Fulham away. West Ham at home. So that's not easy, bro. But it's yeah, it's not the maddest, but it's not easy. Yeah, I look at I look at Arsenal's and go, that's a bit mad, isn't it? I do look at Arsenal's and go, Arsenal got the hardest out of us. I think Liverpool got the easiest. I think City are somewhere in the middle if they're keeping their buck in it. But, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So it's brave. You look, bro. If you lot win against Brighton, you got a hand on a trophy plan. Like, 
Yes, there's still a lot of football to play, but I'll definitely say, like, bro, I believe Liverpool are going to win the league now before the Brighton game. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? I'm backing the boys to get it done. But if you if we was to lose or draw against Brighton, then you don't deserve the title. You mm. don't deserve it. You don't deserve to win the Premier League. Yeah. And that thing has to happen between Arsenal and City within the next two, three games for us to, just to be back in our hands again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like no Liverpool. game is easy at this point of the season. I'm, no one's saying that. Nah, that. That's it. No one's nah true. No you know one, what no it one. is, yeah? Go on. You win the Brighton game, you win the Sheffield United game. If you beat us at Old Trafford... You reckon it's done? It's done for me. It's done for me. Unless you lot bottle it. Because if you win yeah. those three games, yeah, obviously man. Atlanta, you'll smoke. Crystal Palace, Fulham away, Everton, West Ham. I mean, by the time you get to Tottenham, oh, um, Tottenham at home on the 4th of May, yeah, you could have created some breathing space if you win all those other games. No, that's true. Do you know it's what I'm true. saying? And then maybe you could afford to draw and still, you know what I'm saying? And still have that little bit of room because then you got Aston Villa, you got Wolf, and then you got, um, yeah, Wolves at home, bro. Like, bro, that's, I can't lie. Your fixtures are calm, bro. Like, if you deal with the first three games, if you beat Man United at Old Trafford, yeah, and you don't win the league, y- y- you wet the bed, bruv. But it's in your hands. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, because you know what it is, though, Arsenal could go and beat Man City, and I wouldn't say it's in our hands completely then. I just mm. think that we get our three points to go top of the league, and these man draw. If Arsenal even beat if, Man City, know, even if City win, if even Arsenal if beat City. Man City, then they go above you by what, a point or something like that? No, no, goal difference. Oh, no. well then. Okay, so they're only above you on goal difference, but then yeah. it's still in your hands, bro. Like, kind of. Do you know what I mean? Because then both of you need to win as many games as possible, and your run is more difficult than theirs. If you win the games you're meant to win, there's yeah. banana peels yeah, in there for us. Seven, seven goal differences, obviously. That's why I feel like we don't need to. We need to beat Brighton like three, four nil. Get yeah, yeah, but even seven right. goals ain't a lot over ten games, bro. Do you no, know no, what I'm saying? Because Arsenal, Arsenal could draw a game, or, or Arsenal could lose two 0 We could win three 0 All of a sudden, goal difference two. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Goal difference can swing either way. The only thing I just don't see Arsenal losing the game for the rest of the season. I can see them drawing. Don't get it twisted. I think everyone, everyone. In this top three is dropping points are getting dropped, bro. At some point, points are getting dropped. I don't care what anyone says, points are getting dropped. You know what I'm saying? I, I, nah, I'm but not... I'll be real. I've, I think all of you lot, all of you lot, probably gonna lose games, but between now and the end of the season, all three of you, because, like you said, football's not played on paper. Um, I expect Arsenal to lose. I expect you to lose, and I expect Man City to lose, and I expect you lot to lose games that people don't expect you to lose either. I'm not I'm not counting Arsenal versus City and a team's gonna lose a game. Like you could easily go and lose to Aston Villa or something stupid like that, bro. It could happen. Like I expect teams to lose games, bruv. All of them. You know what I mean? And the the only team that if I had to guess ain't gonna lose a game mm. would be Man City. Because this is yeah. this is this is their time. Have this is the where team have they lost the game this day? I haven't lost the game this year, have they? This this calendar year. I I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not either. sure. They have. A, I know that. I know their home record is really good anyway. But this is where they turn the screw, bro. This is this is their their title charge. This is their victory lap. This is their cup run, bro. This is this is when these men just turn it on. Do you know what I mean? It's like every game's a cup final now. Every single game. Do you know what I mean? So, and I'm talking about the Premier League as well because City could definitely lose to Real Madrid um in the Champions League over two legs. They could. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know if that's good or bad for the Premier League. That might be bad for the Premier League in a sense that if City do go out the Champions League and they can focus on the Premier League, they're even less likely to lose any more games. So I think people want Man City in the Champions League for as long as possible. Mm. It's a, it's a, yeah, they haven't lost a game. Yeah, I had a feeling. Mm. It's, it's, it's a hard one to call in it. One thing I would say is that you're right in, in, in terms of Pep has the anti though, but I just think City are queffable, man. They are. These men have been queffable this season. And but we we said that last year as well, blood. We you know said it last year. They started badly, and and then we we're like, oh, and then we checked the numbers, and, and, and this year like, they I've, started better. It's I've like, got oh, fans now telling me that Vardio's done a really good job at left back, considering he's a centre back. Brother Joe Gomez has done a good job at centre back. So go, Joe Gomez has done a good job at left back, coming from centre back and right back this season, and. 
he ain't cost 100 million. It's not rocket mm. science. Ben White done it at Arsenal. Your guy cost 100 million. That's why it's a bit mad for you, man. You know what mm. I'm saying? All of a sudden, we're ignoring price tags for certain, man, just because teams are doing a decent. Like, at the end of the day, I'll still tell you now, Sabozla is not pulling his weight. Mm. But doing well, though. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop this Vardy old prop. He's, he's, done, he's done okay at left back being centre back, but that's something Joe Gomez and Ben White, who were who are once, you know, clowns of that. Not clowns, but man have been laughed at, bro. They've had their banter period. Ben White was bantered when Rashford was ripping him up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I said Joe Gomez could never put a Liverpool top on again at centre back for my club just last season. I was done with him. You know what I'm mm. saying? So why is it okay for then like Avadio to be to be man of glossing up his thing, pause to 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 get it, to mm. like like he's doing anything special. He's not doing nothing special. He's playing at a standard that arguably isn't good enough because he's not better than Ake at the left back position. And he's not good enough to play centre back right now. And he's come at the price of hundred million. Give it a mm. break. Give me a give it a rest. You know what I'm saying? Bring him in at centre back. Bring in your hundred million plus centre back right now in the biggest game in the season for Arsenal and tell me if he's really worth his money. Yeah. No, I hear it. And no one's talking about it. No, no I hear it, bro. It. Yeah, but people always try and change the narrative um, on those situations anyway, bro. Like, the proof is in the pudding, bro. Look how much he's, he costs, bro. You can't say that he he was a good signing, bro. And just in general, City signings this season are, are the reason why the title race is as close as, as it should be because their signings have been so dead. Proper mid, bro. Proper mid, so, so I can't... Yeah, like, listen, and that's not me even writing them off for me, like, Pep's not. Yeah, obviously, there's this whole notion that, you know, give these men a year and they'll cook. Listen, Vardy, all could all good, all be good next year. But I'm talking mm. about the era now. Yeah, what but he's a defender, bro. I'll be real, yeah, defenders, defend, bro. I don't want to hear nothing about give man a year and that what. Like, you know what I mean? His understanding of danger and all these other things ain't going to improve after a year, bro. Like, the guy's a pro. He's been playing professional football, bro. Like, the reason why he's not playing well ain't got nothing to do with adapting to the system. He's not playing well, yeah, because yeah. man's just getting found out. Look into, I'm, not, I'm not writing them off because I said, I've seen Rodri and these men all look shit first year, in it. Do you know what I'm saying? I've seen, I look at Rodri now. I'm not saying man can't improve. He's young, innit? Like, mm. I'm, not, I'm not being blind to it, but let's not act like it's just okay. It's all cool. It's calm. You know what I'm saying? It's calm to just not pull your weight and be mm. okay at that price. Like, it's not. I'm on, I'm, I make sure I'm on Caicedo every single day, brother. That <laughs> man is on fraud watch, even when he's in training, fam. Even when he's in training, that man is on fraud watch. I would have said the same for Lavia, but he don't quite cost 100 and something million. He costs 50, 60 million. Fair enough. Don't need to eight Premier League minutes. We'll see what he's like when he touches pitch, whatever in it. Mm. Cool. But when a man is 100, like, do you know how much, of, by the way, do you know what we're not talking about? The fact that 100 M's are spent on a defender. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? On the defender. Yeah. You know that's Van Dyke money. That's Van Dyke bread. You know what I'm saying? Take it in. I hear it. You know what I'm saying? 100 M's for a defender. And you don't even get paid in this right in this position. He better be world class next year. He yeah. better be world class. Yeah, but even if he is world class next year, he's still not worth a hundred million, bro. Bro, the World Cup, hey, the World Cup hoodwinked all of you. All of you got hoodwinked for the World Cup. Hoodwinked all of you, apart from Liverpool, because Macalester is actually doing all right right now. I'll be real. Mm. And even then, he was thirty-five m's. He was thirty-five m's. So even if you weren't doing all right, it's thirty-five m's. That's less than the average price he's getting. Fifty m's is the average you're getting for yeah. this man, bro. Enzo Fernandez and flipping Vardio. Even what's Unahi doing these days? Uh, Unahi, my man that plays midfield. Yeah, I know who you're talking Amrabat. about that. The Moroccan you. Amrabat, blood clot. Oh my. Hey, but days. to be fair, anyone can die at Man United, bro. As much as yeah, Amrabat yeah, looks yeah, dead, yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, it's, it's a great uh, thing at your club. Our at team's time, dead, innit? Our team's killed many a player, innit? But the Nawi, bro, yeah, he was playing in France. Um, I don't know if he's still in France or he got a move. But um, he had a good World Cup still. Yeah, like, bro, like, uh, and listen, I can hear, I can see man in the comments saying money is irrelevant. No, it's not. Mm. No, it's not. Because when Pogba walked in, he was on fraud watch from day one. Before when the Sancho ball, yeah, before he struck in, a football, man was saying man was 90 million. On, bro, Sancho was on fraud watch before he used his curling sponge, fam. Yeah. And man, it's always pulled. So tell me, what are we saying? Yeah. You can never, like, you can never say it's done better. Money and wages is, is still, is still, 
you still got to take in these factors when it comes to, to players, bro. Sterling's on 300, 300 and something thousand a week, bro. You think yeah. Chelsea fans are calm with him performing the way he's performing on that money? It no, matters. Not. It, it matters. You can't say it don't matter. You can't and say, even oh, if yeah. it shouldn't matter, it matters. It matters because it judges the way that fans um, respond to players. Do you know what I'm saying? Just like if a man comes through the youth team or a man's a certain age, they get a certain license that other players don't get. For me, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're homegrown or we bought you. I only care about the level of your performance. That's all I care about, bro. I don't give people allowances for their age, bro, because at the end of the day, yeah, if you're not good enough, you shouldn't be playing. Man don't care. Do you know what I mean? It don't matter. It don't matter, bro. A crime is a crime, bruv. Once you're above the legal age to go to jail, you're going to jail, bruv. Yeah, That's just so, what it is. Yeah, look, 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 look see, a uh, big up, I thought he said, he's saying, oh, you should judge them on their performances, all right? His performance ain't been good enough. Yeah, but bro, again, yeah, saying you should judge a player on their performance, yeah, that's very idealistic. Do you know what I'm saying? That's very idealistic, but that's not the reality. Because that's like, yeah, if you get a car, yeah, if you get a car that costs 30 grand and a car that costs 100 grand, you expect a certain level of performance from the 100 grand car that you wouldn't expect from the 30 grand car. That's just life, bro. If you get in a in a in a GTI Golf, yeah, and you get in a flipping, and you get in a Lambo, bro, like you don't expect the same performance, bro, from both cars. You don't, and that's just how it is, bro. So when people are saying um, you should just judge them on the performances, yeah, ideally you should, but if you're in a Lambo and it's not driving good, you'll be like, all right, cool, it drives nice, but does it drive nice for a Lambo, bro? Does it drive nice for a hundred grand car? That's the reason why when men review whips and they see certain cars and they say, yo, for the amount of money I've paid, yeah, why is this interior plastic, bruv? Like, why, why ain't I got leather seats, blood? Man, I'm going to pay a hundred grand. A man, man got some textured flipping seats and I ain't got leather heated seats, bro, for a hundred bags. I'm like, hold on. So where's my money gone? Exactly. That's it. Because that's like what it that. is, bro. Imagine you pay a hundred bags for a whip, bro. Man ain't got Apple CarPlay and that. You can't even plug your phone in and that. That's crazy. Yeah. We saying got the, like, you still got to put the, D, the, the disc. You got the disc player thing. Yeah, bro. Player. Other than your, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Man's paying a hundred bang, hundred bags for a banger. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It don't make no sense. Like there's certain there's certain amenities that you expect here yeah, when you spend that money. If you pay money for a premium hotel and you go to the hotel, blood, and ain't got no shower gel, imagine. You know, like that, or you don't get your robe and your slippers, bruv. Man, ain't, man, go to the hotel, man, don't get the robe and the slippers, you know. Like, bro, man, spent all this money and I ain't got my robe and slippers. If I ain't got my robe and, and, and slippers. And that's Kaiseido, like, you're not, st like, like, and that's what I say about, and that is Kaiseido, bro. Like, cool, mm. you, pay, you pay, you know what I'm saying? Man, man's gonna stay at the nicest hotel, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even, this TV's not even smart TV, bro. Mm. If they're giving me channel one to five. Mm. And sure, cool. In fact, they're giving me, they're giving me free view. A man can watch, man can catch a little good, if I'm, if it's the right day, I can catch a good movie on film four. Mm. I can catch a good movie on film four. But I ain't got Netflix. And yeah. it's 2024. I ain't got, I've got to watch Netflix off my phone now. Yeah. That's not what I paid for. Nope. You know what I'm saying? It's not what you pay for, bro. And that's why I understand that the price tag, yeah, does matter. And as much as people say it shouldn't matter, it doesn't matter how much you paid, you've got the player now. But, as a human being, when you pay a certain amount of money, you expect a certain level, bro. Do you know what I mean? And this is just yeah. this is just what it is. If you go to a restaurant, yeah, and you spend big money, you expect the food, yeah, to match the price tag. And if it doesn't, yeah, you're you're not happy with your experience. So naturally, people are gonna judge players on their price tag. And that's what it is. And that's why, yeah, people will turn around, yeah, and say, yeah, for instance, yeah, that Garnacho is better than Anthony, yeah. The reason why they'll say that is because Anthony costs 85 million and Garnacho costs 500,000. But the reality is he's not a better footballer than Anthony. But they're judging man, they're but they're judging Anthony on the price tag. Yeah. That's that's just it. That's all it is. But pound for pound, as footballers, Anthony is way better than him. But the point is, man are gonna judge man on the price tag, bro. Whether you do it consciously or unconsciously, you're still judging man on the price tag. Same with the Grealish thing. The Grealish and Doku thing. The reason why they did the Grealish and Doku thing, yeah, is because Grealish was a 100 mil player, yeah, 
Doku cost 60. So they're saying we paid 60 for Doku, yeah? He's better than Grealish. The reality is he's nowhere near Jack Grealish, bro. Mm. But they're still penalising Jack Grealish for his price tag. It happens in football all the time. Same with Kai Havertz. If Kai Havertz cost 20 million, no one would have been laughing at him. The guy was meant to be a star boy. He went to Chelsea, he flopped. That's what happened. And now he's gone to Arsenal for another 60 million, yeah? And he's just, he's mid, bro. So man, are, man are going to compare him to his price tag. But that's my point. Man are, man are looking at a player and saying, cool, like there's certain man who have actually been okay. Like I actually think, yeah, if you look at it from a season-based perspective, Kai Havertz hasn't been that bad for Arsenal. He's been all right, isn't it? Man's just been all right. He's but, just been all right, but he hasn't yeah, been he's not, a million yeah, all right. He's 65, 70 million. Mm. You're not supposed to be all right because that's not all right mm. money. All right money is 40 million. Yeah. Maybe pushing 50 with add-ons. That's, that's all right. That's mm. almost borderline. You could actually do shit and I could say I'll give you another two years. Because yeah. the investment ain't out of my pocket range. But when yeah. you're paying out of your pocket range, because even though CE have got bread, 100 mil for a defender is out of most man's pocket range, bro. Yeah. It's as simple as that. That's out of mm. your pocket range. That's out of, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that we're sitting here and going, yeah, these stuff, you know, the player can't control how much you cost and rare tear tear. That's dead, bro. Because when Werner was missing sitters, you was laughing at Chelsea Football Club for the mm -hmm. 70 million that they spent, bro. You was laughing at them. Or however many, how much million he spent. You know what I'm saying? When Werner was missing sitters from two yards out, man were laughing. Yeah. I have it, so was bumming it out, 60 million, 65, what was the song? 60 million down the drain. Mm. First thing I'm mentioning is the price tag. So don't give me the price tag don't matter. Because it's hypocritical. Because when, when your rivals are spending big and it's not working, you might not the first man to call it out. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this money makes the world go around when it comes to this football thing, man. Don't, 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 don't act like it's different. You know what I'm saying? Lukaku was supposed to be the, the final piece of the puzzle for Chelsea. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but bro, but this is it. But this is exactly it. This is exactly it, bro. Like... Naturally, even if you should only judge players on their performance and their performance only, I said the same thing with Sancho, bro. Like Sancho will play, yeah, and not have his best game. He might have a six out of ten. Man are ripping him to shreds. And then you'll see Rashford and Garnacho have a one out of ten, yeah, and this, the noise ain't the same. And they'll be judging Sancho on how much we paid for him, yeah. And also, yeah, the fact that they just don't like man, bro, instead of his actual performance. Because when I watch him play for Man United, I can count on one hand, yeah, since he's been with us, yeah, how many times I thought, you know what, he's been really bad today. I remember there was one game against Chelsea. I think, I think was it a Chelsea game? I think it was, I think it was a Chelsea game where he was just bad. Mm. And I was just like, right, nothing's coming off for him today. And I actually remember, like, simple passes that he would normally make, he wasn't making them. And I was thinking, yo, he's having a stinker here. But, bro, I can't remember too many of them. Rashford, that's every week. Do you know what I'm saying? That's every week. And and that's what I mean. And the energy's not the same, bro. And and this is exactly what I'm saying. It's okay for the energy not, the, not to be the same because man has a price tag. Man was invested, like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously... You can give mm. certain man time and obviously certain things matter, but at the end of the day, mm. it was still it's still price tag settings. Like you know what I'm saying? It's still like right, cool Rashford come for the academy it didn't cost a penny, mm. but Matt, there was an investment made in Jaden Sancho and he had a backlog of tearing it up at the highest yeah. level, the highest level. So it's okay for him to be. That's all that I look at that more rants as Rashford. We know what Rashford is. And Sancho, we actually have an expectation, bro. There's an expectation mm. there. We rate you in it. You're actually a baller. Anyone with eyes can see what you're capable of, even off, on your off day, as you said. Mm -hmm. You know Rashford is limited. We know what Rashford can do. Rashford is capable of crazy things. We've seen that, but we know it don't come often enough. Yeah. You know every three seasons, we're going to get 30 goals in one season. But we know for the other two, you know what's going to come with that. Yeah, it's going to be less than 10. You know, yeah. like that. And so, yo, bro, I've seen you do up the best. I've seen you do up the mm. best, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In the Champions League. When man was telling you, oh, yeah, he's only doing it for Dortmund. Can't do it in the highest level. Yeah, man went in the Champions League and batted up same way. Yeah, bro. And that's off not playing football for six months as well. And this is the mad thing. And Abdul Rahman, I agree with you. But what I'm saying is, yeah, 
it's a very idealistic way to think. Like life is not idealistic. Two things can be correct at the same time. And this is why I used yeah, the hotel example and I used the car example because ultimately you're paying for a product, you're paying for a service, isn't it? It's the same with a restaurant. If you go and spend a hundred a hundred pound, yeah, mm. on chicken and chips, yeah, and it don't taste like a hundred pound chicken and chips, you, in your head you're saying, "Yo, I could have gone to Nando's for twenty pound." What? That's what you're thinking. That's what you're thinking, bro, and and that is the point. Like people always want to see what they're getting for their money, bro. Like that is that is how we think naturally. So whether you're actually doing it, yeah, um purposely or not you're always comparing something to what it cost bro that's what you're doing bro do you know what i'm saying it's just like bro if you want to go out with a girl bro there's certain girl here that you're willing to spend certain money on in a restaurant a certain girl you're not you're not you're not willing to bro because you're looking at her and saying man is she worth that that trip to flipping wherever that's what you're thinking bro like man demo, you you do it in life all the time you're always right. thinking, right, is she worth going to this restaurant where I'm going to have to spend two bills? Or is it a £50 thing? Bro, man, them are always doing calculations in their head, like, is it worth it? And that's what you're comparing it to, bro. You're going to have a good time at both places, but one girl you're willing to pay two bills for food and one you're only willing to, to spend £50, bro. Like, this is just what it is, bro. And to be honest, the level of the date's going to be the same, but you're just paying for the prettier face, blood. But maybe yeah. the one with the thing that's not as nice might be a better night out for you. Yeah, that's the, and that's what it is. It's, it's the it's the money, it's the investment breeds expectation. It's just as simple as that. When the expect, expectation breeds expectation, unfortunately, that is what it is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like, as a footballer, it's part of being financially secure for the rest of your life that, you know, a price can get put on your head. And if you put a foot wrong, you're going to get castrated, unfortunately. Because you've played yourself to a level where you're now, that's now expected of you. 100%. And you know every player saying? deals with One you. Of the of, like, like, like people act like when you have a high price tag and people have invested in you, people act like that player's not on 300 grand. Yeah. They act like he's not, not. Do you know what I'm saying? The guy that's on 50 grand a month, the guy that's on 50 grand a week that people don't have expectations on ain't going to get the coverage. Yeah, but to be fair, Enzo's probably is not on big money and they paid big money for him. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Like, it's, it's, there's certain situations where you can, there's certain nuances that are different. But, and, and, and obviously, when, when we say expectations for money, yeah, we're not saying that, cool, every man that costs is expensive. We're talking every game you have to play 10 out of 10. We're not saying mm. that. That's mad. But we don't expect you to bum it off and be average. If, like, for example, there's extreme situations. I said, can I say there's the most expensive midfielder of all time in the mm. Premier League? So I'm sorry, six out six out of tens. We're not doing that. I'm not paying. I didn't pay 150 million for you to do what Marvelous McCamber's doing. We can we cut polluting. No, 100 percent, bro. 100 percent. Like this is just what it is, bro. Now like, if you buy a if you go on, if go you on. buy a runaround off Auto Trader, do you know what I mean? You don't mind bringing it to the garage to get certain things fixed if certain things aren't working. You know, like that. That's that's what it is. But when you buy something brand new off the showroom floor and you spend a certain amount of money, you don't expect no problems, bro. The reason why when you buy a new whip, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, you got three years, blood. You got three years. Things under warranty. Man ain't got to, um, man ain't got to do the MOT. Man ain't got to do nothing for three years, bro. You get a three-year guarantee with the fresh thing. When you get something, when you get something that's used and it's got higher mileage, bro, like, you always expect the unexpected with that. Like, there's certain allowances that you make for it. So, naturally, yeah. you're always going to judge players like that. Even with Declan Rice, bro. Declan Rice is just a good player, bro. He's just good, bro. The, the problem with it is the 100 million, bro. That was always the problem. When I watch this guy, he's not a 100 million pound footballer, bro. He's a 50 million pound footballer at a stretch, innit? And that's not, and that's not a disrespect to him. That's the reality. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's a guy that just breaks up play yeah, and passes the ball sideways. Like, he's very limited, but what he does, what he does, he does it's, well. It's mad, it's mad important for the team. Yeah, like, it's mad, mad important, but it's still limited. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one was saying, yeah, and I'm not comparing him to him because Claude Makelele was a much better footballer, but 
No one was looking at Makaleli and saying, yo, Makaleli's role is so important in the team, yeah? He's worth 100 million. Yeah, they weren't no. saying that. They were like, listen, he's important, but he's still a steady Eddie, in it? You know, like that. So he's not right. a Galactico. He's not. And there's no amount of your importance to the system that makes you a Galactico, bro. You're a Galactico based on your ability. And he's not a Galactico, in it? And that's just all it is. So the market is effed right now. Yeah, that, the market is effed. That's why I'm not like ignorant to like I'm not completely ignorant to price tags and that. I just mm. think I just I just think certain times certain people have certain energy. I feel like when it's like for instance, I keep it a buck. When it's Darwin mm. Nunes, give him time. He's raw. Oh my god, it's fine. Don't worry. But when it was Timo Werner, <laughs> look at this. Mm. When it was Sancho, when it's when it's Pogba, man are laughing, bro. Yeah, man are laughing. But when it's your own players, give him time, man. Give him time. We'll come good. These are the pieces that we're going to see. How can you expect man to just hit the ground running? Or what, like, how are you expected to hit? The them man to hit the ground running? Right, okay, yeah. makes sense. 100. And this comment is spot on. Like, man said what Rice is doing, yeah, it's what we've been missing, yeah. So his contribution's worth a lot of value to us, exactly. But what something's worth to you, yeah, and what something's worth is not the same thing. Someone's worth, or something is worth, whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. That's what the true value is. Because there's certain men that will go out there and spend a thousand pounds on Jordans. I will never spend a thousand pounds on Jordans because Jordans are never worth a thousand pounds for me. But if there's someone here yeah, that collects Jordans and that's the one pair that they don't have and it's going to cost them a thousand pounds, they might put down that a thousand pounds. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not doing it, bro, because it's not worth that, bro. It can be yeah. worth that to you, but I'm telling you that it's factually not worth that money. If you decide that it's worth that to you, that's a different conversation. Mm. But I'm still saying there's no pair of trainers on planet Earth that's worth a thousand pounds. Because there isn't one. Man know how much they'll know, know how much it costs to make these things. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is what it is. So man can I can say it's not worth that. And I can say I'm not paying that. So if I say, yo, you're a dickhead for spending a thousand pounds on trainers, you can say, Oh, it's worth a thousand pounds to me. Cool, but you're still a dickhead for spending a thousand pounds on trainers. Because I'm looking at that's a holiday. That's what I'm looking at. So, do you know what I mean? It's all about perspective. But in football, yeah, two things can be right at the same time. But you just need to make sure, yeah. And what a lot of people don't do, and this is why I don't like Twitter, there's no room for nuance on Twitter, bro. There's not enough characters. So you could be arguing one point. Someone else could be arguing another point, and you're both right. And then people are out here picking picking sides because you're saying Rice is worth 100 million to us. Certain Arsenal man was saying, Oh, but let's let's give West Ham some more money. 100 million weren't enough. Th that, that's what they were saying. That's what they were saying. Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. No, that, that do you know what I'm saying? Good. So, cool. He might be worth more than 100 million to you lot, but to a football team, yeah that don't really need that kind of player and are just looking at him at his value as a player, not his value to your team, you're having two different conversations. You're having two different completely conversations. Same goes for Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz um, has added something different um, to Arsenal's team. He's added a bit of height. That's about it. Do you know what I'm saying? And he probably, I don't know, he holds the ball better than Jesus in a different way. Like, Jesus wants to hold the ball, turn and run. Kai Havertz will kind of drop off and do pop the midfield and thing drift, and pop in. it off and then drift into space. He's more clever than Gabriel Jesus, isn't it? Jesus ain't an intelligent footballer. He just yeah. looks like a raw off the street, blood, fresh out the favelas, trying to nutmeg people and dribble everywhere, isn't it? And That's what it is, yeah. Arsenal fans, it, it looks good aesthetically, but the truth is, yeah, you look better without him. You look better without him up front. Just like you look better without um, Zinchenko at left back. But these are uncomfortable things that Arsenal fans are starting to realise. It's not that Kai Havertz is doing amazingly well. It's just that he's smarter than Gabriel Jesus, bro. Gabriel Jesus ain't as good as they thought he was. That's just all it is. That's all they're finding out with Havertz. It's not that Havertz is a world beater. It's just that you've got someone up there, yeah? that can do the basic things well that's needed. 
This is why when Arsenal fans were cussing off Olivier Giroud, I never really understood it. Because in terms of what you need a centre forward to do, bringing people in to get into play and stuff like that, they coated him. But Giroud scored more goals than Jesus. So as much as Giroud was shit for Arsenal, yeah, where's Jesus then? Bro's got four Premier League goals. Don't tell me about injuries. The Bray can't finish. They got onto Giroud for not being able to finish. But yeah. Giroud scored more oh, goals yeah. than him. That's an understatement. That's an understatement, by the way. Got What's that? Giroud. Yeah. Going on to him was an understatement the way they spoke about Giroud. Like. Bruv, they were talking about him like he was a donkey, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And they talk about Jesus like he's a world beater. But Giroud was clear of Jesus it's, in it's every aesthetic, single it? metric. It's yeah. aesthetic, so, isn't it? Because Jesus is a... Like, he's a good footballer, isn't it? So, because he's yeah. a good footballer, but these yeah. attributes that Jesus has... They're not being utilized like how Pep utilized them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, when Jesus first walked through the door at, at Arsenal and he was taking the ball down from how high, doing up two, three man, then putting it on a plate for Saka to tap in. Mm. That Jesus, I'm going, yeah, cool. I see why you bought him. But that was a year and a half ago. That was 100%. seven months ago. Right? We have not seen that Jesus in mm. like 15 to 17 months. And now this brother, the brother that said that he wanted to play up front is now saying, oh, yeah, but I'm not really a goal scorer. But get the fuck out of here, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is just what it is. Four goals, man. Come on, let's yeah. go. And a man saying Giroud went on 15 goal game drought and cost you the league. He didn't cost you the league, bro. You cost yourself the league. One, one player, yeah. One player cannot cost you the league, bro. Impossible. And let me tell you something uh, as well, yeah? The slip, the slip, the slip. No, no, nah, nah, but even then, you could say the slip, yeah? You could say that the slip cost you lot the league, but to be completely honest, bro, that's hindsight, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Because that's like, if you say that that one Gerard cost you that league, yeah? I mean, cost you that league, for instance, yeah? There'll be other times in the season, yeah, where yeah, that, he might, dropped, yeah. that he might have won you points. So... Yeah, do you know what I mean? It just is what it is, bro. Like, and if you did win the league, you're not gonna say, "Oh, Gerard won us the league." He didn't win you the league. The teams win the league and they lose the league, bro. That's mm -hmm. how football works, bro. Like, one player doesn't win you a league title, yeah, and one player don't lose you a league title, bro. It's just like certain Man United fans were saying, "Oh, we went out of the Champions League because of Onana." No, no, we didn't, bro. Because even though Onana made mistakes, yeah, we went out because we were rubbish. Because we were still conceding twenty plus shots a game, bro. So. They but don't. Me, they don't count the saves that Onana makes. They only count the mistakes. Yeah. Let me. Let me quickly. Let me. Let me just put these men on game because a couple of men in the comments just said the slip. It wasn't the slip. It was a. It was Chris. It was a Crystal Palace three three. It wasn't Crystal Palace three three. All we needed from that Chelsea game was a draw. Yeah. We needed to draw the game or win the game mm. to, to stay ahead on points. We ended up losing the game. Therefore, if Man City won their games in hand. They would have been ahead of us on goal difference. That's why at 3-0, when we were 3-0 up at Crystal Palace, that's why players were getting the ball and running to the halfway line. Because we needed to win, I think it was 8-0, or at least win by eight goals to then equal or better Man City's goal difference. That's mm. the reason why we kept throwing people forward. Losing that game or drawing that game on Crystal Palace wouldn't have meant anything. City won the league on goal, would have won the league on goal difference anyway. So for people, please remember your football winning. Remember your football from 013, 014. The, like, losing that game to Chelsea meant we had to score too, way too many goals. City were yep. too far ahead on goal difference. Just had to put that one out there. Because I think people just forget that, right? Forget that, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And also, yeah... This is spot on. When Giroud's not scoring goals, this brother contributes, yeah, by linking play, bringing people into the game and all these other things, bro. Van Dijk said it as well. Van Dijk was saying, he's like, bro, one striker is, that is Giroud. He was talking, yeah. Van Dijk was talking about Giroud, he goes, bro, he's like, no matter what I do, he's like, he's not going to run past me. He's probably not even going to dump me. But he's just mad intelligent, bro. Yeah. It, at what he's good at, but at, at what he's good at, and there's value in being intelligent at what you're good at because not everyone mm -hmm. is good at everything. In fact, very few footballers are good at everything, most footballers are just good at something. Mm. If we're talking breaking down ball to the you know, what I'm saying the finer deals, you know, that's why we have positions, <laughs> we have positions for player strengths, and it's as simple as that, you know, what I'm saying if your winger is a decent dribbler, but he's rapid and can cross the ball, then 
if you put him in an inverted winger situation, he's going to be shit. Mm -hmm. But if you dash him in a 4 4 2 in 05, he's going to be a world leader. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. So, um, yeah, people, it's just one of them ones where footballers, especially strikers, give you more than like than just scoring yeah, goals. My my thing has always been, and I've always defended intelligent centre forwards, yeah, that link the play, make people around them better, bro. And that segues perfectly into like Ivan Tony. Man United have to pass the Ivan Tony test blood on the weekend, and fam, he balled out for England. Like people aren't giving him his flowers for the performance that he that he put in for England, bro. Like, man was playing against Belgium, you know. He wasn't coming into an England team, yeah, and playing against flipping Andorra, yeah, or like San Marino. This brother came into a proper competitive, even though it was a friendly, like you said, it didn't feel like a friendly. He came into a competitive game, yeah, against a reputable nation, yeah, and his link play, yeah, was unbelievable. Even if he didn't score, even though he did score the penalty, but I'm saying even if he didn't score, yeah, his performance was enough that you look at the performance and you're like, yeah, this guy's a serious player, bro. Yeah, Tony was, he, he was, Tony was, the way he was killing the ball, I said, I said, yeah, I'd rather that than Harry Kane dropping into centre mid and doing, doing this, that and the third. I agree. You know what I'm I saying? Because I'm not saying Harry Kane can't do that. Harry Kane can do all of those things that Tony was doing. But up here, Harry Kane's not doing that. I don't think he everything. can do what Tony does. I'll be on it. He can't do what Tony does. Do you know what I mean? And, and Tony can't do what he does. Well, in terms of... No, nah, Kane can hold up the ball. No, nah, no, nah, not the way Ivan Tony holds up the ball. Nowhere near. But he, but he, no, I wouldn't say nowhere near. I think Kane can do it to a very nah. good standard. 100%. Yeah, but, yeah, but Kane, Kane turns like a lorry, bro. Like, Kane yeah, is not the same. Exactly, Tony don't exactly turn mad quick either, bro. Tony. Nah, bro. The agility, the difference in agility between the two of them is different. There was one thing, for instance, yeah, there was a ball that came in and Ivan Tony yeah, stepped in front of the centre-back, chested it down, spun off, ran in, in behind, and I think he got it back from Kobe Mino. Kane ain't doing that, bro. Kane ain't got the, the agility and the fleet of foot to pop the ball off, spin, and go. Like, Harry Kane takes a touch, Takes another touch, gets his head up, sprays a diagonal like 40 yards. Harry Kane don't do quick um, given goals, popping it off, bro. Like nowhere near. Harry Kane don't even want to put his body in front of centre-backs. Harry Kane plays in the pocket. Tony can play on the centre-back. Kane don't play on centre-backs, bro. No, no. I, listen, I think if I'm being on, on a Harry Kane thing, Harry Kane can pin the centre-back just not to the... Like Harry Kane can do everything Tony can do, in my opinion, but I just think not to Tony's level that Tony does certain things. So, as you said, Tony for me will hold off a centre back more like eight times out of ten, he's winning his duel and he's bringing the ball down while holding the defender. I think Kane can do that, but prefers to either one play in the pocket and two, if he has to battle with a centre back and win it, he can do that. But he's not a like Kane's not a bully in it, he's not a bully, but he doesn't need to be. You know what I'm saying? Hence why I kind of half agree, I kind of half disagree. I would like I look at Tony and I don't think he's agility. I don't think he's agile, but he's just more agile than Kane. You know what I'm saying? No, I think he's agile enough. Tony, enough. Tony's agile, enough. agile, bro. Tony's agile. agile man. He's That's agile hard. and he's mobile, bro. He's just not. He's not rapid. I don't know. Name a name a striker that you would consider um, agile. Then, if Tony's not agile, a striker that's agile. Yeah, forward in the league. I would, in the Premier League. I'd say Nunes is agile. Nunes is agile. Yeah, he's, he's very. But he, but he doesn't know how to work. He doesn't know how to move his feet though, right? He don't know how to he, move his feet. Nunes is clumsy. I wouldn't say he's agile at all. You're not not agile with your movement. Not not technically. Not technically. I'm talking about agile, like agility, the way you move. You, know you mean his mo you mean his mobility like Jesus is 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 agile. very agile. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? And agile, he's yeah. very ag agile and nimble footed. But yeah. that is at the top top level, bro. Do you know what I mean? And Gabriel Jesus is seven stone. Yeah, 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 he's he's light on. I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? The six foot two man aren't supposed to be. Agile. Yeah, Holland and Nunes are no, not in the same why, category in terms why. of their. That's why they look like their their shoelaces are, are tied together because <laughs> them men are tall. Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah, just just by stature, you're not supposed to be agile and that tall. That's so when you are, you're special yeah. in it. Like you're special. Like you Isaac know, is tall, yeah, and quite agile for his height. Yeah, you don't Do you make sense. That's why I said he's built like Henri. You don't make sense. Yeah. He's not allowed to be agile and tall, but he is, and he's got feet as well. Yeah. To go with it, but that's why I said like no, nah, no. Nah, Jackson goes with the Nunes and Harlem, so I'm not dashing that one in there. But 
That's why I'm saying that Tony's not agile, but he's agile enough, and he's more agile than Kane. Yeah, yeah bro, in compare in comparison to Harry Kane, yeah, Tony is agile, bro. Because if Tony's agility is a seven out of ten, yeah, Kane's is a two. Kane is stiff, bro. He's got zero agility, bro. This bro's had so many ankle injuries, and I don't even know if his his feet even flex the way they're supposed to anymore, bro. Yeah, Do you no, know what Kane, I'm saying? Kane, Kane moves like he's got ankle weights on. Kane is not agile, bro. It Kane, takes Kane, yeah, three touches to turn, yeah, when it takes normal centre forwards one, bro. Like Kane is not agile, like anywhere near it, in it. So it's one of them ones where it's like Kane has to play in the pocket. He has to because Kane moves, yeah with the grace of a centre-half, bro. Like, he does. Do you know what I'm saying? He's very, very technical, but he has to play in the pocket. I haven't seen Harry Kane play on a centre-half yet and dominate them ever in his career, bro. I can't I can't tell you a single centre-half that Harry Kane has pinned, held, rolled them or anything like that. I, I can't tell you one, bro. That's not his game, innit? Like, he plays like Teddy Sheringham, like, in that little pocket of space in between... The strikers, where the strikers are supposed to be in the midfield. He mm. plays like that nine and a half role. Like, Ivan Tony yeah. is an actual centre forward, bro. Harry Kane's no, a I'm nine gonna, and a half. The only thing I'll say is that, do I don't think we create enough for an actual nine, which is annoying under Southgate itself. It's very annoying. Like, I saw I saw Tony pick up some absolutely excellent positions with brilliant runs. And for me, the, and, and listen, I understand you're going to get games like that as a striker where you're not going to get found. And the person who's actually going to get found is the guy making the late run. The, the McTominay run, if you like to call it. You know what I'm saying? The Bellingham, yeah. the Bruno Fernandes in 019 type, type of, that type of position. Because if you saw, the chances actually kind of fell to Bellingham. Those were where the chances were being created because guys are following Tony, leaves a little gap, late run into the box. That's where you're going to find your chances. But I just preferred what I saw from Tony to what I saw from Kane. Not yeah, saying. but you yeah, but you've just told me why. You've just told me why. Whether you realized it or not, you've just told me why mm. you preferred what you saw from Tony because the way Tony plays, yeah, is more um conducive to the way that we play. Because Harry yeah. Kane dropping into these pockets and further congesting the midfield when you've got Foden drifting inside, Bellingham inside, Mino inside, Rice inside, it's too congested, bro. Tony stretches the pitch bro Kane don't stretch the pitch and this is exactly why yeah it looked better without Harry Kane because Tony does the selfless thing and stretches the game and brings people in Harry Kane dropping deep and pinging diagonals yeah that don't help England so for, mm. for much man saying Kane's more clinical bruv in major tournaments bro Kane don't really score from open play bruv Kane scores penalties for England, bro. I, I don't say Kane is. Kane that's is a Kane. fact. That's yeah. a fact. I think in the, in the world, the last World Cup, I think he scored five pens, bro. And oh, yeah. one of them was it wasn't one of them a deflection. No, one one, one, one hit him. He tried to pen. get out of the way. It was four, four pens. pens. And one, hit ankle. one hit his ankle when he was trying to get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I'm trying to say, bro. The facts is, yeah. Like again, when we talk about Giroud selflessness bro dropping into areas chesting it down for your teammate and if you don't get it back it, it doesn't matter do you know what i'm saying like this is yeah. what yeah england need because like you said england don't create enough so harry kane's not going to be scoring these headers in the box and stuff like that but if harry kane's not scoring goals for england yeah all he's doing is dropping into spaces and congesting the pitch even more that's all he's doing bro and that's not to say he's not a good player but the facts are Styles are there for a reason, bro. And this is why when Hoyland wasn't scoring goals for Man United, I was like, my issue is not the fact he's not scoring. It's the fact that he's not creating. He's not doing anything. Man's just in no beefing. man's land. You're just, you're just beefing the centre-back. Yeah. Yes. Same with Lukaku. When Lukaku's not scoring, I'm like, this player's just running around with his thumbs up, bro, like he's trying to hitchhike, bro. Like, man's not balling. He's not contributing to the game of football. The same goes to Erling Haaland, bro. If he's not scoring goals, he's not contributing. And this is why I'll always pick a Giroud or a Tony or a player like that, bro, or an Edin Dzeko or something like that. Because these kind of strikers, even if they're not scoring goals, yeah, these men... Firmino in there. I think Firmino's one of Yeah, Firmino guys. as well, but Firmino's not a striker. Like, really, yeah. he's a 10 and Klopp played him as a false nine. But this is why, yeah, yeah for me, 
where football is going right now, yeah, now you don't have wingers anymore. Traditional number nines are obsolete. You don't need them. You do not need them, bro. The same with a Martial or a Benzema or someone. Someone that can link play, bring players into the game, also run the channels, dribble if you want. Traditional number nines in modern football, yeah? They're not uh, really uh, rated. They're, they're, bruv, they're not needed, bro. They're not needed, bro. They're, they're, a, they're a hindrance to the team. Unless players team like Hoyland, mm. players like Holland, all of these men, yeah? Players like Lukaku and all these guys, yeah? It's like, they're going to cost you more than they're going to win you games, bro. They're, they're going to. Do you know do what I mean? People think, can say no services. Guys, yeah. Do you, I was saying, do you think those guys are better now if, let's say a manager was to come in and bring back the 4 4 2? We're talking so, and he'd slap like a Doku, where even, because let's be honest, everyone likes your right footed wingers on the left and your left footed wingers on the it's, right. It's let's not say, even the 4 4 2. You can play a yeah. ball three. Just play right footers on the right, left footers on the left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So in the box. Yeah, like, like, yeah. So do you think, like, if if a manager was to come in the game now and kind of reinstate either either a four four two? So because you know what, do you know why I say four four two as well? Because as well as the four three three. Because when you've got two strikers to think about and your right midfielder and your left midfielder are swinging in crosses, like it's it's just do you know what it's, I even say a lot of centers really wouldn't even know how to deal with that. In today's of course game. they wouldn't. Of course because they wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Because barely anyone... How, how, why do you think as well? In so many situations where, like, I don't know, even when, when you, man, threw the kitchen sink at Liverpool. You know what mm. I'm saying? Where When teams throw the kitchen sink and you've got two strikers up there, it, three, four crosses that don't even have that much quality, France is causing issues. Of course. It's causing problems. Because centre-backs aren't used to dealing with two strikers. I'm talking no, if not. you really bring it back. And let's say you have a really sturdy, a sturdy, um, a sturdy pivot... And someone wants to bring them back. Do you think that would be effective? Would that be? Do you reckon that would be effective? For of course, like, of course, of course, it would. Lukaku but you don't even need two like, strikers. All you need is mm. someone like a Giroud that can hold the ball, and then you have someone doing the goal striker thing, like Bellingham arriving mm. late, and he just lays it off. You don't even need two players in the box, bro. You don't even need that. You just need two wide players, yeah, that are going to go down the byline and put the ball across the box, bro, because. The reality is, yeah, most of the time, these wide forwards cut inside and they play a shit cross and it goes out for a goal kick. That's what happens. Or oh, it goes straight into the keeper's hands. These in-swingers, yeah, yeah the, the percentage on the in-swingers are very, very low. Very low, bro. When you're whipping the ball away from the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper can't come for it. You're causing mayhem, bro. You're right. causing mayhem, especially if the ball can drop. The amount of goals that United used to score from Beckham putting the ball in and they think they've cleared it and then Scholes just turns up on the edge of the box and rasses it in the top yeah, corner, bro. Yeah. We used to score goals like that all the time, bro. Like, these in-swinging crosses ain't it, bro. But again, yeah, the reason why everyone's playing inverted now is because it's all patterns. Invert, pass across, do you know what I mean? Or it's percentage football, let's flow it into the box and that, bro. You get very little return from these inverted things. How many times have we seen Rashford cutting on the left, whipping across here and just blast it across the goal and nothing comes of it? How many goals have Man United actually scored from a Rashford in-swinging cross? Or Barely. a Garnacho in-swinging cross, bro? Barely, bro. And, and Hoyle really less than five. And Hoyle is not on a slouch in the air as well. So it's, yeah. Bruv, we ain't scored no goals from those. Like, how many goals have we scored from Anthony, yeah, cutting onto his left foot, yeah, and, and crossing it into the box? None. So why do we keep doing it, bruv? Look how many goals get scored in the league, yeah, from people pulling the ball back across goal, yeah, and people tapping it in, bro. You know, it's or do you know what? Or even, even I don't know. You know when the you know when the you know when the you know when the wing back overlaps. You know when the so you have, say the winger has the ball and mm -hmm. and the wing back overlaps and the wing back goes to cross it and then lays it off and then yeah, remember remember the Henderson pulls, cross that yeah they, yeah they pull it back. yeah they pull it back. Pull it back and on, on, it's the first time. It's not an in swinger, but it's the first time cross. Even yeah. that better than cutting in and keep doing the same in swinging cross. Because in, you know what the thing is of in swinging crosses, yeah. It's you have to have a lot of because it's actually easier for the keeper to come and collect it. Easy. So you're Go straight cross, at them. Your yeah, your your in swinging cross has to be almost more pinpoint than your actual cross on the byline. Because exactly. the byline, the keeper actually has to leave his position if he wants to meet it. And the defender has to meet it. And 
you're more likely to cause. There's just more. There's more things that it's more. There's more nuances that can go wrong. Yeah. Like with the incident cost, you have to. It has to be very much pinpoint, and you have to have more than. More, for me, if you have an incident cost with one striker, forget about it. So yeah. Just forget about it. You need two. You need two men running in the box and another man supporting for the late run. But if the defender heads the ball out and bypasses the three men that are the, that, that are battling for the ball, you're now suspect. You're now suspect to a counter attack. Yeah. But that's it's why it doesn't more. make. But that's why it doesn't make sense, bro. Like they say, yeah, that they literally think that um, it's a higher percentage, but it's not. That's just the facts. It's really not, bro. You see more goals, yeah, from the ball being pulled back across and going in than you do, yeah, from the ball being being whipped like inwardly, bro. And also, in swingers are going because they're going towards the goalkeeper. As you're an attacker, bro, you're running onto something that's being whipped in and the keeper's running towards you, bro. Who's getting there first, bro? You got your eyes on the ball. The keeper's got longer arms. He's going to get there and he's going to punch it and he's going to clean you out as well, bro. And he's not he's going to gonna clean you out. As a striker, yeah. I hated them in swinging crosses, bro, because you're running towards a goalkeeper and he's running with his knees in the air, bro. He's, he's gonna never take... going to get penalised. He ain't never going to get penalised. Bro, never. Bro, I hated them. They're dangerous, bro, because them in swingers, yeah, you're hoping that the goalkeeper misjudges it and it goes in, bro. That's all, that's all you're hoping, but the likelihood is I'm going to get my head top taken off, yeah, by the goalkeeper. And that's, that's all that's going to happen. So it's one of them ones where the pullback is where the money is. And, and they're using it with the fullbacks now. They're using the fullbacks to, to um, they're using the fullbacks to yeah. um, do the pullbacks. But bro, pullback if you had two players that could play that cross, mm. it would be more dangerous. Yeah, the pullbacks are the low crosses. I'll say it from now, yeah. Um, City used to, I the way City used to rinse. Do you know how many low crosses happened? I've seen Aguero score. I've lost count. Mm. I've lost count. Right? Like, and then on top of that, Liverpool. What Trent and Robert went spamming low crosses to Sal Salamani every time. Yeah. Spamming the low cross. And how about this? Even if the low cross didn't work, Mino's just tapping in the rebound. He's just tapping in the rebound. You know them proper shit tapping. Bro? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, managers. Uh, bro, that's team. how a lot of these players be getting G8. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Salah yeah. got bare assists like that, bro. Just just laying it across the box like five five yards, tapping. Yeah, but but it's yeah. obviously you know, it's, it's harder than it looks because it's part of a because I've seen a lot of man try to do the overlap and the low cross, and man are either taking too long to do the low cross so the keeper just picks up, or they're mm. crossing it too early so the strikers actually aren't able to get across their defender. Yeah. There's a lot of time. Obviously, there's timing to it. You have got to get the timing right. But Sterling, Sane, Aguero, when them three used to do it, it was actually unstoppable. Mm. It was almost borderline unstoppable. And when you did stop it, you had you had you had man you had Yaya Torre lurking, and then man there lurking. Not 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 even so much Torre, but you had them man lurking in the midfield, thinking right, cool. You had a Gunda one there. Do you know what I'm saying? You have anyone's KDB there. You had them man there waiting for it to happen, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like when when it comes to the art of crossing, there is a skill to it, but the insanity part of it is that, man, I cross it, like, like, you're not, A, you're not doing it with a specialist. Like, I've seen Coutinho get enough assists from mm. in-swinging crosses, but Coutinho is a specialist in delivery. Dead ball or move it or open play, he's a specialist, bro. Yeah. I've seen Trent do it. He's a specialist. I've seen KDB. These guys are specialists in delivering the ball. Rashford is not a specialist in crossing the ball. Mm -mm. Anthony is not a specialist in crossing the ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's 100%. Yeah, but that's even more reason why they should be on their stronger side in the first place. Because Anthony crossing with his left foot from the left is going to be better than him crossing with his right foot on the right. I mean, with his left foot on the right. It's going to be better. But, but, as be said, better. but as we said, modern day football, though, Rance, man don't really want to cross the ball no more to a big striker. No, they don't. But even if you, you don't, even if you're crossing two feet, yeah, if I was crossing the ball to someone's feet, yeah, I would rather be on the right hand side playing the ball across my body than being on the left having to play with my right foot, yeah, across because back in, yeah. it's, you need more precision playing an in swinger, bro. That's what people don't realise. You need more precision. It's easier to put the ball into an area. That's what KDB does. Look at KDB's assists here. Most of them are from the right side with his right foot. 
They're not precision, bro. He puts them into areas. It's harder to put the ball into an area because of the curvature on the ball when you wrap your foot around it. It's harder when you're putting an in-swinger in from the left, yeah, to put it in a specific area because the natural curve of the ball takes the ball in a certain direction anyway. When you cross from, from the right-hand side, you can hit it flat and play it straight across or you can curl it and whip it away. There's different ways that you can strike the ball. When you're striking the ball from the left-hand side, the ball naturally is going to curl that way, bro. Naturally. Because you're not shooting across your body. Your body's already open. So it's just basic angles, bro. It's easier to pull the ball back. It's easier to pull the ball back. So you have to actually be a really, really, really good striker of the ball to be a right footer on the left-hand side and play the perfect cross so that it's not too close to the keeper but not too far away from the striker. This is surgical shit, bro. And these men are not surgical ballers. Yeah. True. They're not surgical. Do you know what I'm saying? A man saying um, in-swingers are, are, usually, um, are usually early crosses. But, bro, it depends. Because, hey, Bex used to play early crosses. Bex never used to go to the byline. He used to play... He used to play crosses before he got to the 18-yard box and he was still whipping them into the box because he's surgical, bro. Yeah, and this yeah, is just yeah, what yeah. it is. It doesn't have to be like... like it's, it's for instance, you see, like I said, you see Beckham cross the ball from an early cross position, but he's not mm. cutting back on his left to play that cross. He's no, he's not. Because right. he so like, right hey, remember, what the, the ball is curling away from the keeper mm. and defenders are having to go towards their own goal. Yeah. That is a breed for mistakes. You know what I'm saying? You can slice it into your own net. Keeper could miss the ball. Keeper could clean out his own defender. Keeper has to punch or when he commits, he has to commit. If he misses the ball, it's a goal or a goal scoring opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You'd rather for the opposite team have a defender going towards his own goal and the keeper having to leave his position mm -hmm. rather than the ball traveling towards a keeper and he can hold his position and still cover and defenders don't actually have to move. Because with an instrument, defenders don't have to move. No, they don't have to move. They can just read it. The keeper yeah. can say, yep, keepers, man, just stand there, just block the player off. Or you could just play my side. There are very different things you can do. When you get to the byline and you pull that pull that back and you whip that in at pace, yeah, there's risks of own goals. That's you know what I'm saying, saying? yeah. There's yeah, like, risks of own goals. you got more time for the midfielder to get into the box for any ricochets that might land to them. Mm. The higher percentage football, yeah, is to get down the byline, yeah, and pull the ball across the box. Because so many things can happen, bro. The defender can miss kick it and score an own goal. The defender can not clear it properly and it can land to somebody coming onto the ball. Your attacker can attack the ball. Just like the Matip goal, um, the own goal against Spurs, bro. Put the ball across the six-yard box, yeah. With power, you're going to see way more goals than these stupid in-swinging crosses that most of the time don't amount to anything apart from chances created on your stat sheet for all you nerds. Because that's just what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Because when you see all of these players Fair with these enough. chances created, it's Bruno on the left-hand side taking a touch out of his feet and just tossing it into the box. That's all he's doing. And then it's not even a, it's not even a high-quality chance because you have to be an unbelievable header of the ball, yeah, for someone to whip some flat in-swinger towards you, yeah, and you're going to turn your neck all the way around like an owl, yeah, to direct the ball into the other part of the goal. Like, you don't score goals like that, bro. Do you know what Look, I'm all, saying? All you do, as I said, but again, it has to be specialist situation. And man are doing it, I just think that's what's crazy. Man are doing it about specialists. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? And let's not, let's, like, I believe... Yeah, but that's the point, though. If there's no specialist, you shouldn't be playing like that. No, of course not. But that's why we say your manager shit. Yeah. Or not? Yeah. He's he. Well, he's yeah. He's just moving. Yeah. Like it's just not good enough in it. So that's that's my point with the crossing. But like, this is why it's annoying because I like to see. I don't mind traditional nines. Me, if anyone knows me, I like my false nines. You know what I'm saying? I've always loved the techie nine that can drop deep and do whatever he needs to do. And with goal scoring wingers, especially, that's why I was so like gassed at my club had goal scoring wingers with a tech equals nine. Mm. Like that's a little era there where I can cherish that. You know what I'm saying? But not every nine is going to be six foot two rapid. I can't really dribble that well, but can finish and when it was fist into their part. You know, you're going to get your storages, your guys who are actually good at ball, but need to be utilized in the right way. As much as I get onto Jesus, he's techie and can be utilized in the right way. But 
it depends what you've got around you and what you can utilize in the spaces. It's again, it, again, it's modern football, isn't it? It's a chess match, and unfortunately, there's never going to be as many Mavericks in 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 this team. So, I don't know, man. Like, and I, I, and I know your opinions, obviously, on a Haaland, you know, on a Nunes, and whatnot, because. I get what you're saying. It's like a outside of the system. What are they contributing over the ninety minutes? No, Nunes with... runs around, so Nunes is no, 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 not not so much Nunes. Yeah, not so much Nunes. Nunes stretches the back line, does all these things. Yeah. But I'm talking more of a Harlem perspective. More from a yeah, Harlem yeah. perspective, like in the Liverpool game, he didn't contribute anything, really. I've never liked those kind of centre forwards. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? This guy is just people in Zagi, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? With 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 stature. That's all he is. He's a goal hanger. Like, that's what he is. Whether people... Bro, like Gary Lineker, bro. They're man are goal hangers. I never rated Lineker either. These men are... Bro, these men are... Bro, they are foxes. No, rewind, bro. Fam. No, that's rewind. why they... No, bro, rewind. that's... Bro, rewind. that's why they... What, bro? Rewind. No, rewind. Nah, no, no, wait. I'm not calling him a goal hanger. Bro, but you're a goal hanger. Is, no. yeah, bro, he's a goal hanger. You know, bro. he used to the playground and he used to chill by the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I used to... <laughs> don't tap it. Sometimes there'll be no goalkeeper, blood. There'll yeah, no bro. You might have waited for that long ball, bro. From straight from the goalkeeper, bro. He's a goal hanger, bro. Goal That's hangers don't even know. Goal hangers don't even score them goals. They wait for the mistake. They yeah, bro. For the mistake. That's what he is. That's what he is, bro. I don't oh, rate those man. guys, bro. And man, you know what it is? The reason why I don't rate them here yeah, is because, yeah, they're always the least technical ballers oh, on the pitch. Always. Pippo Inzaghi. Gary Seven. Lineker and that. You watch Gary Seven. Lineker. These man just, yeah, bro. Them man just going tappings, bro. They're dead food, bro. I don't rate these ballers, bro. I don't rate them because it's like, you know, the way I see it, yeah, it's like, oh, it don't take years and years of training your craft and that to just know I'm gonna wait here, yeah, and when the ball comes, kick it in, bro. Bro, I can tell man that can't play football. I can say, yo, just stand here in it. That's why they had to invent the offside rule. Because you could tell a dead bro, a dead baller, yo, just wait here in it, like, and then man will just yeah, get you the ball, and then you're gonna get some, you're gonna get yeah, some. and then man will just kick it in, bro. Like, nah, it's bullshit, bro. I'll bro, be honest, it's bullshit. bullshit, and that's why God. when you watch, because nines never always used to be like this, bro. Nines never used to be like this. People think people don't realize that people like Gary Lineker, Inzaghi, all of these guys, these were in these guys were not the norm, bro. When you actually think about old school nines, yeah. They were technical, bro. They were technical players, bro. And then you had your tens as well, like your Del Pieros and stuff that were technical. But even if you looked at your batter shooters and these men, these men are technical. Even when you looked at your Shevchenkos, these men are technical. They could shoot with both feet. George Weah, like the Hernan Crespos. They were nines, but they could hold the ball. They could also link and they could also shoot from outside the box as well. Like... Nines didn't mean you only scored in the box, bro. Nines were scoring from outside the box. Shearer scored from outside the box. Cole was scoring from outside the box. No, no, but yeah, but that man, you think Shearer and that man were just to throw. That man had... Bro, the right, he was scoring from outside yeah. the box. Man was chipping yeah, keepers man. from outside the box, bro. Like, yeah, these like, men were technical. Even, I'm throwing Fowler in there, bro. Fowler, yeah, even, Fowler as well. Bad boy finisher. Like, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Like, even, um, who's the other one? Melito? Yeah, yeah, you Melito. Know? Rude. Rude, like these yeah, bro. Rude, technical bro. players. Like, no, I'm saying, and don't get it twisted, yeah. I'm not on Harden like you're on Harden today. I, the goal, the goal hanger thing just kill me because when I hit, when I when I hear the word goal hanger, yeah, I'm thinking playground. Man, are tying their laces and that the ball drops to them and then kick it in. <laughs> and man, I want to say, then man will celebrate. Well, that's, the that's how he scores all his goals. Man will say our oh, rants, <laughs> but you have to rate, you have to rate what my man does. I don't rate it, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because the thing is, yeah, yeah I be real. No, but people no, say he's got a range of finishing. Now Harlan's got a range of finishing. I don't think he's got a range of finishing. I don't think he has got a range that higher than me. He scored to the kicks that are taller than me. Rams, come on. No, 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 no. He ain't got a range of finishing. He scored that one outside of the foot volley thing that he done where he was up in the air and he just lifted his leg up. But bro, yeah, he scored the scissors kick. He scored the scissors kick last year. Bro, bro, man are talking about this brother like he's Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He's not, bro. Like no, you know, he's not. He's not Zlatan. He is not. I'll be real, yeah. This brother. This brother, his finishing is so overrated, bro. Because you look at the chances that this guy misses, bro. A man going like he's mad, super clinical. He's not super clinical, bro. 
He's nuts, bro. This brother has got the open up the body, left foot little whip finish in the corner. That's what he's got on Smash. That is the finish he's got on Smash. That's the only finish that he has on Smash. Every other finish he has is sporadic as fuck, bro. Do you know what I mean? You don't know what's going to happen, bro. He's not that guy, bro. And you know, you know, you know what it is, yeah? You know what finish is crazy? The crazy finish is, yeah? When I know man's a certified gunman, that the little dink finish over the goalkeeper that Michael Owen used to do, oh, do you know what I mean? Bro, nah, even Phil Walcott had that in his bag. He's yeah, but hope now, but Erling ain't got that kind of cold bloodedness, bro. Like them man were doing this all the time. Erling yeah, Holland is yeah. a volume yeah. finisher, bro. That's like, I say that about Salah though. When people tell me yeah, Salah, Salah is, is a volume finisher. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. When I when people say Salah's Salah, some people try to say Salah's clinical. No, he's killer. not clinical. He's a volume finisher. Yeah, Erling yeah. is a, a is a call, he's a volume but, guy but, as well, bro. But I think there's but, but Rance, there's nothing. Let's keep it keep it up though. There's nothing wrong with vol, volume finishes as long as the team you're playing in. Has a volume of chances being created. Yeah, and, but Salah and, does more for the team when he's not yeah, scoring. This is the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you can contribute yourself by again making the runs, doing the things outside of that to create the volume. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you can create the volume yourself, that's when you can also get a range. Obviously, uh, Harlan for me at Dortmund created the volumes a lot with him and Sancho, bro. Them man were cooking. When him and Sancho were the front two at Dortmund, him they were mashing work. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call Harland just a a tapping merchant or anything like that. Yeah, but that. that was only because of the high line, bro. I'll be honest. He's a high line merchant, bro. That's why. Like, you couldn't, you can't go high. You can't go hang if everyone's on the halfway line. Yeah. But like, you thing. can't but, do that. But what, but what we have to say is that in terms of uh, what he's good at, he's an alien at, in terms of, do you know what I'm saying? Because if your team... Play, I, I, don't, I don't think he's an alien still. I think his I best think he's, thing... Because he's I think his best thing is his movement, innit? it? I think from a technical standpoint, yeah, he's massively overrated. But... What he's he does, no what, he's what he does well, yeah, is the run where he'll fake the back post run, then step in front. Like yeah, he's got that's, that. That's like that is that bro. that is the that is the proper striker scumbag instinct, bro. Like you know, yeah. one run for the defender, one run for the guy on the ball. That's what they always teach you in the, in academies when you're when you're learning how to be a nine. Well, back in the day, they don't do that shit now for sure. But you make one run for the center half, but then yeah. you make another run. For the guy on the ball, bro. I mean, doing yeah, football all the time, where we where we cut and then we show for the ball, and that. a lot of players don't do that no more. That yeah. is intelligent, but in terms of his technical level, in terms of his ability to finish and how he strikes the ball and all of that, it's massively overrated, bro. I, I, I'll, I'll be real. A lot of men don't have that movement and that that kind. No, of they movement. don't. But he's been bred, yeah, to be like this, bro. Like he's he's a thoroughbred, yeah, number nine. But he's playing in an era right now where you don't really have creators. So because of that, yeah, he has to be in certain teams, yeah, in order to do what he's doing. And also he's taken away from the team, bro. I'll be real, yeah. If somehow City don't end up winning the league this season, yeah, I'm looking at him. Because I'm saying, yeah, cool, for all the goals you scored, yeah, all them times when your team was struggling, yeah, what was you doing, bro? You were scratching your nuts, bro. That's what you was doing, bro. Now, now, this is just what it is, bro. I'll be completely honest. I think that we're in a post number nine era of football, whether people like it or not. No, it's true. The nines are the wide players it's now, bro. Like, I can't afford yeah. to carry a centre forward anymore because I'm carrying two wide players that don't really want to defend. Bro, I'm with Remy, bro. We're carrying like it's it's goal scoring wingers with false nines, bro. Yeah. That's it, fam. Or or late mid, late midfield runs like what Madrid are doing with Bellingham and that. You know what I'm saying? But Bellingham like, is the false nine. Yeah, but he sometimes plays in the midfield, and they remember when Hossolu plays, he plays a second striker in it. So it's a bit of both in it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying all the Holland's got credit in the bank from the treble. He never scored in no finals. All I all I'll say all, all I'll say with with Harland is that with the things that he is good at, he is an athlete who has killer instinct of his movement and he doesn't need to be clinical because of what he provides in his position. And so if your team creates a whole high volume, Haaland is going to score more goals than we've ever seen. Oh, and which is, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that we still have to, for me anyway, that's something I'm still going to credit him for because it still has to be done simply because there's not, like that's, you won't see me credit, uh, uh, comparing him to the old school guys who could do that and more, right? You wouldn't even see me comparing him to Harry Kane because he can do that and more. If Harry Kane just actually just stood in the box 
because Harry because more time we want Harry, Harry Kane's a better him. finisher than him. Period. So no, no, like, but yeah. how many times do we sit and say Harry as a mate? Stop, mate. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's certain times we just want him to do that for England, especially. You know what I'm saying? But what? Are yeah, the... but that's because Harry Kane's a footballer, though. Yeah, exactly, and he wants to be involved. Same with Rooney. Rooney could have just stood in the box, but Rooney is mm. a baller. He's a footballer. You know what I'm saying? He, mm. he excels in multiple facets of the game at a very high level on top of crazy attacking intelligence. Mm. Probably played probably play right back if he wanted to at a high level. You know what I'm saying? So with Haaland, though, there's a lot of... I see it all the time, yeah, with the Gapos, the Nunezes, the... The, the Jesus is I, I, the, the Watkins, all these guys. Yeah, I'm seeing hella low crosses getting fizzed there. No one's there. Pullbacks, no one's there. Or it has to be done three times for them to realize, oh, wait, I need to be there. So the third time is when I get my goal. Harlan's being, Harlan's there all three times. I'm probably getting two goals. And that's why his volume of goals is so high. Yeah, because, because he's smarter than them. And, and it's, yeah, and, and that's it though. He doesn't have to be as good at ball as some of these men. I look at Miroslav Closer. That's the goal hanger. In the, that was a goal hanger, bro. But yeah, but yeah, but he is he is Miroslav closer, yeah, but with with athleticism. Yeah, 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 exactly. But but did we, I? But I remember saying, bro, this closer guy was athletic. It'd be a bit fucked, you know. Yeah, but I looked at yeah. Miroslav closer and I said, I can't believe this scrub broke R 9s record. I should stop watching football. <laughs> That's true. The when he was breaking records, I was thinking, how how? But he broke R 9s world World Cup record, and I felt like I should never watch another World Cup again. <laughs> That's how I felt because he was a scrub. This and he did front, but he done, he, he scored a tapping and, and done front flips, bro. bro but like, why are you doing a front flip? That's why I said I can respect his thing, but you're not getting compared to next to certain man. I can understand. Well, there you go. And no one compares Miroslav closer, yeah, to real ballers. But we're comparing Erlen to real ballers because of GA. That's no, why. But really, I, I, he's I, not I, a baller. I look at his goal tally and I and I run his goal tally and look at his stats, and we can talk about that. And I don't mm. really compare Harlan to like oh one of the best strikers you've ever seen. I keep it more to the he's one oh, of the man best. is saying that he's a Premier League great already yeah, or a Premier League legend already just because of the goals he's scoring. So this is what I'm trying to say, bro. But he's not better than uh, most it, of the it, Premier it, League strikers bro, that man's got because he, he's brought he's the all the, the amount of records he broke last season is crazy, bro. Like I can't look past that. I'm not saying he's a Premier League great already, you got more to do, but like bro, the, the amount of obviously you got like there's so many nuances. Remember, you play for City. You play for City, so it's like you're gonna get a lot of goals playing for City, but are you gonna get as many goals as Haaland scores for City? You know what I'm saying? I feel like as well, Haaland is more dependent because of his limitations as a footballer, but that's okay because as long as he does his job, which is to score goals, I'm cool. Just don't compare him to the just don't compare him to Zlatan and them, man. I'm cool. Yeah, but it is okay. It's okay while City are winning, bruv. Oh yeah, but but they're gonna stay winning though, Rance. Come on. Yeah, gonna... but you say that. But if they don't win the league this season, yeah, and the amount of games I've watched this prayer just do vanishing acting, bro. No one cares. Do you know what I'm saying? Like no one's gonna care at the end of the day, bro. Like they've got him and KDB that they both have to carry, bro. So they're carrying two players every game, innit? And if they end up not winning the league, it'll be because of that. Whether people want to admit it or not, it'll be because they man have to carry two players all the time. They have to carry them. And then on top of that, the actual level of their team has decreased as well, bro. Like, this brother, yeah, is literally... The difference between a good game and a bad game for him is just scoring a goal. Similar to Rashford. Like, the difference between a good game and a bad game is scoring a goal. Because if he doesn't score a goal, I can't say he's had a good game because he doesn't do anything. He don't do nothing. This is my biggest problem with him. And this is why, yeah, I'd rather have someone like Darwin Nunes because at least I know if he don't score... He's going to run his socks off, yeah? He might he might make the other team make a mistake or he's just going to be a nuisance, bro. This brother, genuinely, I don't even know he's on the pitch if he don't score. Unless unless there's a high line. Well, un unless he scores, bro. Like, fuck a high line. If he doesn't score, he's done nothing. No, Harlan eats when there's a high line. It's just that no one's naive enough to do that. Unless you're a really good team and you can, again, Liverpool play high line against City, but we're Liverpool, so we're going to take the game to them. So Harlan needs to, you know what I'm saying? The times where you, like, as I said, like when Harlan was for a face up 1v1 with Van Dijk and they were treating that like it was like the, one of the most crazy battles, like whatever. I'll be honest, there's certain man, like Harlan facing you up, he's going to kick it and run, bro. But that's all he can do. And and then guess what the funny thing about that is, yeah? Certain man was saying... Strong and fast. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to Yeah, do. but certain people were saying that Holland 
um won that duel, yeah, because he got no, the shot. No. Van Dijk he didn't had... win he didn't win that duel because Van Dyke, no. yeah, sent him off balance. And when he struck the ball, he fell on his ass. Because Van Dyke, yeah, had my man rushing the shot. He took the shot early. Yeah, he shouldn't have taken it. he shouldn't no, have taken the know, shot from outside the ball. That's a casual thing. You know that's a casual thing, Rance. Don't yeah. that's a casual thing. Matt, real, real, real man footballing the, man. The, no. the defender won that duel. The defender won the duel, bro. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, about this Harlem will tell you. Van Dyke Harlem will tell you Van Dyke won that duel. He'll tell you himself. 100 percent And that's no, the point. Please. In but those I situations, I would I mean, rather Holland's bro. running at me than Darwin, bro. I would. Because you don't know what Darwin's gonna do, bro. That guy's Darwin got ADHD, bro. Darwin, Darwin don't know what Darwin's going to do. ADHD baller, bro. Oh, bro, you don't want that crackhead running at you like that when you're on the half turn, like when you're side on and you don't know which way he's going. Do you know what I'm saying? With Erling, bro, bro, he just, you know he wants to go into his left foot and, and he just done enough to put him off balance, bro. And he took it early. He didn't even trust himself to try and commit Virgil to back him into the box. Do you know what I'm saying? He just got the shot off early, bro. Like all a lot of his stuff, yeah, is actually, you can tell that he just drills certain things. When he gets the ball, he just wants to get it out of his feet, get a shot off. You can see not a lot of thought goes into it. It's automatic with him. What, with Darwin? No, with, um, oh, I'd say with well, Erlen. Say, say Everything's with automatic with Erlen. With Darwin, nothing's automatic. Everything's in the moment, bro. That bro is the biggest like improvisation yeah. of a player I've ever seen. He doesn't know what he's going to do until he does it. Yeah, yeah, not not 100%, but that's, that's, but that's dead to play against, though. That's so dead when you... Cause, even I, we even used to say as Liverpool fans, yeah, as much as I love Mane and Mane the real footballer, yeah, yeah, bro. There were certain times Mane, I promise you, I did not know what Mane was gonna do, bro. Yeah, certain times, but because Mane actually has quality and technical ability, it's even worse. Yeah, like Darwin's not technical in it, so like he'll do a step over, he'll bounce off his own foot, and then he'll use that as the yard of space and then lick it to corner. Yeah, but and if that, someone's unpredictable, yeah, and technical, then you've got Luis Suarez. Yeah. But that's, and that's, but that's why I, I think Mane had that though. That, I think Mane yeah. was also unpredictable and technical. Yeah. And Af. And Af, bro. And yeah. Af. So man's got iron bars for elbows and he spits oil. What the fuck are yeah. you doing against that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing against that? You can't stop that, bro. You can't. Yeah. The only thing that stopped Mane was COVID. That's what stopped yeah. him. Nothing else. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But and again, off the cuff is good in certain situations. But again, when you're against United, and you're four v two, and it's the it's it's the hundred and twelfth minute, and you mm. need man to make a decision. That's when you don't need Darwin. That's when mm. you don't need Darwin. You know what I'm saying? Because he's taking too long, dilly dallying. Because you have you realised when Darwin has to think, he's shit. Yeah, but because he's, he's an instinctive runner. player. That's what I'm trying to say. Same with Rashford. Rashford, yeah, when he ain't got time to think, yeah, you scored oh, a goal like he scored against Man City. Like yeah. when the ball just dropped him and he just slapped it because it's just like there was nothing else to do. Yeah, like, like you could only do that in that moment for that to happen. And that's it. Yeah, and that's it. If he took a touch yeah. dead, whole attack's dead, like do you know what I'm saying? And this is what it is. Like his brain can't keep up with his body, bro. It can't. You know what I mean? And that's what it is with these players. So when I see someone like Erlen, yeah, I think there's beauty, yeah. In the simplicity of his game, but, but there's just not there. enough of it. There's just not enough of it. Do you know what I mean? Like I look at risk and reward with players like him. Yeah, people talk about the treble, bro. City were the one that treble anyway, bro. With or without him, they would have found a way to win it because it was just their year, bro. And they could still end up winning the Champions League again this season. Because when you think of the big, big games, yeah, that dictated whether they won the treble or not, bro, he didn't, he didn't factor in them. He didn't, he didn't factor in them. I don't care. No one wasn't saying, oh, clap, clutch, this, that, and the other. He done X, Y, Z. No, he didn't, bro. Like, man, man, stat padded, yeah, and scored hat tricks against shit teams, yeah, and he scored bare goals on them. But he, like, he wasn't the reason why they won the treble. People need to allow that narrative, bro. People yeah. need to allow that narrative. Like, that's crazy. I, I think I think he scored at such an alarming rate, though. Like I just still think it can't. Be yeah, but City create at such an alarming rate. Do you understand what why, I'm I, saying? That's Harlan, that, but that's why Harlem was a, such a good signing for them. It was it was such a good signing. Me, I was more thinking, right, then man get Kane. But then you could easily also look at it, Rant, and go, would Kane have kept coming deep and doing what he does for England, kind of thing? And it's kind of like. Congesting the quality. No, but Kane like, would have still Kane, Kane, Kane would have done that, and he still would have scored. Yeah, no, no, Kane still would have got thirty. Kane's getting, bro, he's getting thirty plus for Bayern already, but Kane's still yeah. getting thirty at City. 
Bro, I'll no, be real, yeah? If Kane goes to Man City, he mashes work anyway, bro, because there's not many goals that Erling scores. Kane, yeah. There's not... Bruv, if you think of the chances that Erling's missed, yeah, Kane scores most of them. And if you look at some of the goals that Erling scored, yeah, maybe Kane wouldn't have scored them, but it balances itself out because Kane would have yeah. scored the chances that we see as easy chances. No, I agree. And Do you also, know what I'm I, saying? There's certain, there's certain goals, like, as you said, like, I think that was the one from the goal kick where, Har where Harlan breezes his pass, man, brushes off the defender, outpaces him, and then chips the keeper. If that's, there's goals like that where that's Harlan esque in it because you know what it is? That's a Dortmund goal. That's one of his Dortmund goals. Precisely. He this is the Dortmund point. Goal. But he don't do that every week. He does that once every no, 15 no, to 20 against, games. He does that against the Leeds when they were in the Premier League or a Brighton. Who yeah, but again, but again, but he doesn't do that often enough, yeah, compared to the chances he misses. Whereas Harry Kane will score the chances that he misses. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I would, yeah. like, you would rather the guy that does the efficient thing and scores the goals you expect them to score than to score the ones you don't. This is why, man, get onto players like Rashford because you'll score the goal like the City goal. Do you know what I'm saying? But then, you know, you know and then against game. Liverpool, like mm. 1v1 with the goalkeeper, wide. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, you would rather he scored the 1v1 and the shot against City went over the bar because you're not supposed to score those goals. That's always my thing. Harry Kane scores the ones you're supposed to score, bruv. Mm. And, and that's what you want from a striker. Do you know what I mean? Because if a striker doesn't score a goal, you don't expect them to score. You can't criticise them. When man miss chances they're meant to score, this is the problem. This is the problem. And it will always be the problem. When you're meant to score chances, just score them, bro. Just score them. That's but again, this it's just that unpredictability of the whole of the whole thing in it. So I do I, I do say though, like now it's gonna be a big test for Harlem because I was speaking to a couple of the City fans and I'm like, bro, like, do you not, not worry about him sometimes because he's mm -hmm. not really contributing much in games and his goal scoring record, I know he's been injured, but his goal scoring record, yeah, I think needs to pick up at an alarming rate for him to maintain the praise that he's getting. Because yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. if he bans 50 goals a season for the next five years, Rants, I can't see nothing, bro. He's yeah. banged 50 goals, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? If he bangs 50 goals... If he bangs 50 goals, he can justify, yeah? Yeah, because that's what he did last year, though. Other he people picking goals. up the tab for him. Yeah, he, he bangs 50 goals last season, so I can't say that. This season, he bangs... If he's, if he's averaging a goal a game for three different clubs, bro, I've got to look at this thing, bro. But this is the thing, bro. But this is the thing. Because, like, look at someone like Lewandowski, yeah? Lewandowski is... No, but is he's a, a footballer. Yeah, he but Levin, been... exactly. Lewandowski is a better finisher than Erling Haaland. However, yeah, he's also a baller. So even if he's not scoring gate, scoring goals, man can look at Louis and say, all right, cool, he didn't score, but he did this and he did that. So it's harder to justify, yeah, doing the running for a player like Erling when he's not scoring. It's harder to justify it because when you're folding... When you're Bernardo and you're running and you're doing extra pressing, yeah, and doing all these things, and then you're seeing my man just walking around, and then you see that he's had two touches in the half. Bruv? Two? Yeah. In 45 I'm... minutes? Hey, bruv, oh, nah. Hey, bruv, someone's I... holding me back, you know, in the training room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? No, but, uh, but I'm, I'm saying, bro, do you want to play or not? But this is but this is my thing when I'm saying that, like, Haaland's missed certain goals, cert sorry, certain chances in getting big. Like, in the Chelsea game, bro. Big chances he's missing in it. Once Harlan yeah. starts missing big chances in games that he's not scoring in, it becomes a serious, serious problem, Rance. It's a serious issue. But because it hasn't happened yet, he's going to get the praise for what he's doing, unfortunately. He's going to get the praise for what he's doing. That's why I don't have chat for Harland. I, I'll, I'll probably judge him at the end of the season, but I don't have chat for Harland at this rate right now. I don't have chat for him because he's done what he done last season. This season, I've been on him. I've been on him. He's got 18 goals, but he ain't been. He ain't had. A, I can't look at him and go, "Oh, your season, yeah, you've been, you've been good this season." I can't look at that. There's still time. No, because he's good. Yeah, is purely based on numbers. It's not based on aesthetics, and this is the problem. When you start judging, yeah, footballers based purely on numbers and not what you see, yeah, it takes you into a dangerous territory. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? Because then yeah. you start ignoring what your eyes tell you. And you start pushing the narrative of what's on paper. And this is where football fans have gone. And this is why people think I'm trying to be a contrarian. 
when the reality is, yeah, I just actually watched the game and I, I paid. That means trying to be I, different. That, that means trying to be yeah, different. Like, yeah, me trying different. to be different. Yeah. So okay. I'm not trying to be different. It's just that I'm judging the game based on the game and you're judging the game based on stats. That is the would difference. You, but would you would you would you also say though, as an example though, that like because City have so many Mavericks, Haaland doesn't need to be as good as he is. Yeah, but yeah, but a Maverick is not nothing to do with quality. A Maverick is to do with freedom that that's the whole point of a maverick a maverick is is someone you know but when i mean, maverick, I mean, like, I mean like, they've got uh, loads of technical players yeah, yeah i hear that but yeah like, as in technical players sorry i made my maverick's the wrong word. yeah bro i'll be real yeah like there's not as a professional athlete i don't think there's any excuse for you of having technical um inefficiencies because that's all you do mm -mm. that's all you do that's your bread and butter you shouldn't have technical efficiencies. You might have tactical inefficiencies or inefficiencies with decision making because that's a mental thing. Like yeah. your IQ, you can't really dictate that. That's like your parents and all these things have a lot to do with your IQ. So, but but your tech, your technical ability has got nothing to do with IQ and all of them things. Your technical ability is how much time have you put in? There's yeah. obviously little. Obviously, there's going to be little um, nuances to it, but to be just a technically proficient footballer, anyone can be technical proficient. When you when you look at like Scott McTominay, receive the ball, pass it, run, bruv, it don't matter who your parents are, yeah? If you spend enough time kicking the ball against the wall, controlling it, popping it off, anyone can do that. Anyone can do that, bro. The majority of footballers are just average. The majority of them, like not every player is special. The majority of them are just average. They just control it, pass it, run. Most of them. And then you get special players that can do other things, innit? But mm -hmm. I don't think there's any excuse here yeah, for not being able to drop in here, yeah, receive the ball, play it, and do other things when your team needs you, bro. Because, fam, if I'm a striker, yeah, now, nah, bro, I play up front most of my life, innit? If I can see, yeah, that my team is under under the cosh yeah they're not getting a lot of the ball and i'm not getting a lot of service i feel like i'm doing my team a disservice by just standing up there watching them play yeah i feel like i'm doing them a disservice it's his, because... his I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let me, let me play the that was advocate for a second the rants what if yeah. the manager's saying stay there and don't move as in like don't be dropping deep fuck all of that da, 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 da. you know what i'm saying what if the man what if that's the manager's instructions yeah, but even if it is the manager's instructions, yeah, as you know, football is a game, yeah, of, of ebbs and flows. It's like this. Do you know what I'm saying? There's going to be times where the ball's in a certain area. Go help your teammates anyway, bro. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because, like, for instance, yeah. there were loads of times where when I, was if I, when I was playing up front, for instance, if the ball gets played into me, it's, it's a bad pass. And the defender steps in or whatever and gets the ball, yeah. I can either think, oh, you know what? Cool, it was a shit pass. It's not my problem. Or I can still chase that motherfucker back anyway and help my teammates. Even though my manager's saying, all right, cool, make sure you stretch the pitch. But in this moment, I'm going to make myself useful because I ain't touched the ball for 15 minutes. You know, like that. And it's just like, in my mind, I don't know how I'm helping the team, yeah, by watching them play. The manager's already watching them play. I'm on the pitch and I can influence the game. So why wouldn't I influence the game? Do you know what I mean? And this is the problem with footballers in today's game now, yeah? I don't want to hear about what the manager's telling you, yeah? A lot of these players do not know how to take the initiative, yeah, in the game and understand where the danger is, where they can be helpful. Because one, that might have been taken away from them by the manager. But two, a lot of these players are not smart enough to understand... I can influence the game by being here, bro. Because actually, when you look at the best strikers, yeah, like the strikers, if you think, look of a Thierry Henry, yeah, and like an R9, because these are two of the best strikers we've ever seen. These brothers do not stand on the last defender and they don't, they don't stay centrally most of the time. They are very good at manipulating the space on the pitch. If you look at the goals that R9 scores, yeah, a lot of the time, yeah, he might be on the last man, but he didn't start on the last man. He drifts in, gets on the ball, yeah. links or drifts, wide, drifts, or drifts wide. Same yeah. with Henri, because you have to, you have to 
exploit space. This is what football is about. It's about exploiting space. The reason why you move the ball is to move the other team to create space. And then you exploit space. When you play on the last defender, you're condensing your own workspace. It makes absolutely no sense. So you should be looking for space. And if you're in space, it makes it easier for your players to find you and easier to get on the ball. That's why when I was watching Hoyland backing into centre-backs, I'm like, bro, if I see my striker backing into a centre-back, I'm less likely to give him the ball because it's like, you can't turn. All you can do is lay it off. But to who? There's no one there. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? So but it I, doesn't make no sense. This, this is people. People used to think I used to call Hoyland shit. Yeah, I said, bro, the kid's got good attributes, yeah. But who, bro, is the top? No, he's left. got no smarts, bro. That's why but I say like, like, he like, can't be a nine. You're not he's smart. Learning, he's learning. He's obviously slightly improving because he's got the goals, and I'm seeing him things like, like, do you know what I'm telling you, guys? Oh, mm. Mons, fucking hell! Look, he's got seven goals in seven games. You're not seeing what he's doing. I said, no, he's not doing it. What he's doing different is up here. Mm. It's not like core improvement in, in his talent. We know what attributes um, Hoyland has. He's fast. Mm. He's strong. He's actually okay with the ball at his feet, believe it or not. For someone his size, he's not crap yeah. with the ball at his feet. Yeah? But what he's doing before is punching up his defenders, bro. Yeah. He's beating defenders and he's losing concentration. He doesn't know when to be where he needs to be as a striker. Now you're seeing him score goals because guess what he's doing? He's thinking about trying to be in the right place at the right time. Is he really good at it yet? No. But he was dross at it when he first came in and now he's Understand he's he's showing an, an, an understanding of where to be at certain times, and that's how he's getting certain goals. That does not mean what we was we was wrong to begin with. What Hoyland was doing was wrong. It was wrong. He's as you said, he's backing into his defenders, he's focusing on the wrong things. So when the ball's getting swung in for a cross, or you know, the, someone shoots and there's a rebound, he's not there. Mm. He's not there. So you can be as fast as you want. The ball, you can't travel as fast as the ball. No, nope. can't trouble as fast as the ball. This is why I, I credit. This is why I've gone against what you said and credited Harlem for certain things because enough strikers that man think are good enough don't do that. And that's why I say a lot of the Man United fan base, the, the standard has dropped. Man are, man are trying to tell me about Hoyland. Mm. The standard Chelsea fans are trying to tell me about certain man. The standard is in hell. Yes, the standard in is hell. in hell, but you have to understand, yeah, that like there's no such thing, yeah. As perfection in football, there's no oh, such thing. There's no such. There's no such thing as a perfect system. There's no such thing as a perfect player. Every every system, yeah, that has strengths has an equal amount of weaknesses, and the same goes for players. So the players that do drop in, yeah, and they get on the ball. Yes, the one time the ball does flash across, they might not be there, but the amount that they've added to the game, yeah. It's all about a balance. They've added more to the team in build-up. So cool. The fact that they're not on the end, it's about risk and reward, bro. When you're playing in big games, yeah, you cannot afford to be giving up certain territory, giving up a certain advantages. You can't afford to do that in the massive, massive games because against the better teams, yeah, and in the big moments, yeah, you need every single player, bro. You need yeah. every player, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that that doesn't make sense. You need every player. So, if you know that most of the time, yeah, your team are playing without you, and then, then you're not scoring, then does that mean that if he doesn't score, yeah, when he leaves the pitch, that means cool, that means it's a zero out of ten immediately? No. You should be able to look at yourself in the mirror when you leave the pitch and say, you know what, I gave everything for my team today. I don't think he can say that every game. I don't think he can say that most games if he doesn't score. Holland, both of them, really. Yeah, well, more, well, yeah, yeah. I'm talking the more the one who actually gets the ratings, obviously. Yeah, both about, of um, them. If they don't you know score, what? I'm looking at both of them like, what the fuck did you do? But you got, you got. I think Hoyland offers more than Harland. He does, of, but like, not. He still doesn't offer enough. It's more no, than Harland. I think he more, doesn't offer enough for not scoring. You're right. Again, it's yeah, a it's a like, trade off. But that's that's why I said that the risk and reward of Harland is that while not offering enough, he's still scoring an alarming amount of goals. I think the only thing I'll say of Harland as well. One thing I haven't explained is that, you know, when you don't touch the ball for so long mm. and then you touch the ball and you back, Harlan has done that on a, on a good amount of occasions. But the issue is Harlan is not clinical in it. And I always mm. say, if you have a ghosting gene at times or, or ghosting gene, or if you're being told, 
to do it because we don't know what goes on the change rooms. When so you get that chance, you, you have to bag. You have, this is what I'm saying, you have to bag it. This is why I'm on man like Gakpo. I'm on certain man because if they get not up. doing, if Gakpo's not doing nothing, right? So if he's doing nothing, yeah, whether he's being told to do nothing or whether he's just goes from the game, the second that ball falls to you, if you're not bagging, I'm fucking on you, bro. Because yeah. then I might as well have just been playing with ten men. Fact. You might as well have got a red card first minute, dumb elbow, and cool. We're playing the game with ten men and we're seeing what we can get. Because if listen, and this is why, like, I had to concede to the Nunes thing. I said, bro, listen, I still think Nunes is hot, criminally overrated. But at the end of the day, yeah. man's operating sign, bro. You know he's dead. You know he's. But this, but this he is why I said finish, that. But he's a dead. dead baller, but I can still see his value in the team. Yeah, when when things are not going their way, do you know what I'm saying? Because the problem is, yeah, you know what it is, yeah. You see, um, Mavericks creative players. Everyone sees them as. A luxury player, but they don't see someone like Erling as a as a luxury player. He's a luxury player. That's what he is. He's a luxury player because he don't offer very much, but a goal. And the whole point of a luxury player, yeah, what they used to say about these number tens, yeah, being luxury means he's not going to be in the trenches with you, but when he gets the ball, he might do something. That's exactly what a luxury player is. Erling Haaland is a luxury player, bro. Do you know what I mean? But people don't look at him, yeah, as a luxury player because he's not flary. But he's a luxury player. And so is KDB. So City are playing with two luxury players. Mm. Two. That is the problem. Do you know I what I'm saying? I think KDB is aging now, man. I think he's he's aging, and I feel like so he's a luxury player because they're carrying him, bro. They're expensive backpacks, bro. One's a Louis backpack. Do you know what I mean? And one's a Fendi backpack. <laughs> I'm not gonna go as far as carrying it in it because KDB. KDB. They're being carried by their teams, no. and then KDB, they're stats, I, I, they're I'll say hard, but not KDB. K KDB. K KDB. Yeah, yeah. KDB has been awful, bro. Like he gets no, stats, yeah, he's not been great. He's been shit, bro. Is, he came back, made that assist against Newcastle, and, and everyone got gassed. Every everyone got gassed, and, and then he just better than, Lance, better than Gerard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's better than like man. I mean, the immediate sell is better than Gerard. Mm. Better than Gerard. Yeah. It's a rat. It's a rat, man. It's a rat for a man to age. But now, well, man said City scored five more Premier League goals this season before Holland compared to after. And as well, one thing bro, I bro, that, tell me, tell me, I was right. Without telling me I was right. And this is what I'm saying. Like, bro, you're going to get goals anyway. People yeah, overestimate... Bro, yeah, people yeah. overestimate, yeah? One player scoring goals or everyone scoring goals. What's the difference? Who cares? Do you know what I'm saying? Who cares? I don't yeah. care if my team score 100 goals, yeah? And everyone gets 10 goals each, yeah? If 10 men get 10 goals each, yeah? Or one brother gets 70. It don't matter. Goals are goals, bro. Do you know what I mean? If City are scoring the same amount of goals as a team, yeah, without Erlin than with Erlin, bro, then you have to look at what he's doing other than scoring goals. The answer is nothing. Sorry, I'm, I'm still on the Kevin the beer belly thing. That is killing me because Kevin does have a little beer belly when you... Bro, listen, my man thought he grew the hair to distract man from the fact that he can't move. Yeah. You know I, them, I, I, was on the, I was on the, listen, VO5 KDB is going to come back and smoke. Everyone, mm. that's what I was on, and I was thinking, I, I ain't seen that man do his hair in 10 years. Man done his hair, and I thought, Yeah, we're, yeah, we're done, yeah, we're finished. We're nah, finished. bro, trust me, like, bro, it's yeah. these stats, bro. I'm telling you, the stats are their stats are killing people's ability to critically think and to actually watch the game and analyze the game because you know what it is, stats are making people lazy now. People aren't watching football no more because they don't need to watch football. They can just check the stats. This is the problem. And then people are using stats to formulate our argument. Whereas you should be using stats here to see if what you're seeing, it backs it up. And there's certain stats that don't show you that. And this is why goals and assists is such a fucking lazy, a lazy way to assess um, a footballer. It's so lazy, bro. It's so lazy. So we can say Holland scored all those goals, yeah. We can say all that, yeah. But when you look at how many how many um goals that City score and how many goals City average before this brother, 
you'll see that there's not really a difference, bro. Like, they're just redistributing the same amount of goals. So right. it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter who scores the goals. No, it doesn't matter who scores the goals, bro. Like, Peppers admitted that they play better football without him. And KDB. Pep literally no, no, no. said... I said, yeah, bro. When, yeah, when but Pep literally know. said these are not the guys that you have on the pitch if you want to play a certain way, but they are match winners, or I don't know the word that he used. I don't think he said when, match winners. When they used Alvarez and actually spread out the goals, and Alvarez plays up top. Yeah. Like I remember um last season, I think at the Etihad, City fucked us up, bro. No Harlem, you know. And when mm. Harlem was announced that he wasn't going to be playing against Liverpool, I did this one. To this mm. right of this, I said, fuck. Because that meant I'm facing the old city, right? That's what that meant. Mm. That meant I'm facing the city that that moved the ball with 11 man rather than just mm. the 10. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Don't exactly. Go. You said you play better football, but these men are your match winners. So, yeah, I basically said what he said. But the point is, yeah, yeah. the reason why they don't win as many games, yeah, is because it's Pep's fault, bro. You know, like that. And that's the thing. All these things can be right at the same time. Pep don't give his players enough freedom, yeah? And he likes a certain profile of player and doesn't like a certain profile of player. That's why they don't win games. It's not because Holland and KDB is not playing. It's because you've got players like Grealish, yeah, playing in handcuffs, bro. Why don't you let him play football? you got players like Bernardo playing in handcuffs. Why don't you let them play football? you got players like Foden in handcuffs. Why don't you let them play football? And then maybe you'd win football yeah. matches without KDB and Holland. How about you just let yeah. these men play football instead of telling them they've got to stay in certain zones, bruv? How about you don't play Bernardo at left back? How about you don't do that? Do you know what I'm saying? So as much as men say, oh, like, we would win games, bro, you're taking the piss. You're playing players out of position and you wonder why yeah, they're struggling to do certain things. How about you just let them play? How about you just do that? Do you know what I mean? And, and this is the point. So when Pep says that, Pep, yeah, again, is not perfect. His systems are not perfect, bro. Like, the problem with Pep is, yeah, Pep will get a 9 out of 10 player and get 7 out of 10 from them all season. But because he's got 8, it's 9 out of 10 players. Part, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got 8, eight flipping... Um, he's got 8, 9 out of 10 players playing at 7. And that's enough to beat most teams. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, most of your players are underperforming in your system. But because you've got enough money to buy the best players, yeah, you get away with it. That's just yeah. all it is. Because you saw it in the Liverpool game. Liverpool came... Liverpool sent all their youths out to run City. Man for man, that, that Man City team was way better than that Liverpool team. But guess what? Draw. Way better than us. But, but draw, moved, though. Moved, but we moved to them, bro. We moved to them. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But I, but I also look at it and go, that's why I'm really... I believe Holland goes to Madrid in a couple of years, isn't it? Yeah, I believe he does go to Madrid eventually. Yeah, I'm really... Yeah, I don't think there's no space for that youth there, man. They got Hendrick, bro. Yeah, bro. They'll young Hendrick, young uh, young Hendrick, they got Mbappes as well, blood. Yeah, but they don't want to. Could end up at Barca. Yeah, I don't know what he's. I think he is going to Liga at some point. Yeah, I'm mm. interested to see what he's like because you, you said it yourself. Grealish, it's a bondage thing with Grealish, unfortunately. Pause, mm. no, whatever you want to call it. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's, it is what it is, man. Like you're not going to see Grealish play in the ten because Foden is next up there in the ten. Unfortunately, yeah. we're not going to see Grealish there. By the time Foden's done playing in the ten, Grealish is going to be 33. So it's as simple as that. You know what I'm saying? Or he yeah. won't be at the club anymore. He's gone back to Villa to play in the championship. You know how that career is going to go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? As much as a baller as he is. But what I will say is that I'm now looking at Pep's system and there is going to be a rebound because with players like Doku, yeah, Elephant Man, or whatever you want to call him, yeah, with yeah, players like Doku, like, he's players, dead like, food, bro. players like Mateus Nunes, who's the other one? Kovacic, and yeah. these guys there, they're not nine out of ten, eight out of ten players. Yeah, but that's why play. City are dying, bro, because you don't okay. have the depth of quality that's, of Gundo and that's, Amaris. Yeah. That's actually where my point's going. They're not nine out of ten players where you can play them at a seven out of ten, tell them to just do ball retention and we'll win the game. But that's why it's showing you that the system, that. yeah, is flawed. Do you understand? And the flaws in the system get covered up because he's got better players than everyone else. This is exactly what I'm trying to say to you. And I'm a big fan of Pep Guardiola, but the facts are, yeah, when Pep don't have all of his players, a lot of the time, yeah, 
he can stink it out and it's a nil nil thing if he really want it to be a nil nil thing and they just won't find a way through bro they won't like th this is this is what it is because they don't have Riyad Mahrez like they don't have these things no more and obviously Grealish had been injured man never had um Gundo like bro they lost Rodri and then man were going on like like their mum died or something like one player Bro, Rodri, how, how come one player yeah, yeah affects your whole system like that? If one player affects your whole system, there's a problem. No, nah, but that's because we know the system. We know how it runs. We know how it runs. Mm. We know how it runs. If, if if you're taking a certain man out of the system, City are done, bro. They're finished. Finito. Like, and I wouldn't say so much of KDB anymore because... You saw about KDB, they can still get their wins and whatnot. Mm. But it speaks for itself. They didn't play Rodri in the final. They lost. Rodri didn't play three games for City this season. They didn't win any of them. You know, I think, mm. this, I think this is a coincidence. Mm. Rodri is the heart and soul of that midfield. Rodri is more important than KDB. Yeah, but this is but the point. Think... But you know what it is with football fans, yeah? And that's why I know Even, they're yeah, more... Yeah, yeah, this one as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I know these football and fans. And they're morons, yeah? Because... Pep's the best manager in the world. And because Pep's the best manager in the world, these men think that you can't find yeah, the rules wrong. in what he does. Bro, like Johan Cruyff literally said, there's no perfect systems in football. There's always a trade-off. There's always a trade-off. And Pep, literally, yeah, bro, there's so many things, yeah, that he makes a meal of that he doesn't need to, bro. His players are so important. Everyone gives him the credit, yeah, for the system he plays but really it's the players because if he's playing this system here yeah, with lesser players he'll be getting he be getting ripped blood you know like that and this is why i say people need to get off the zerbi's case because the zerbi's playing a certain brand of football yeah with npcs bro mm. and pep guardiola yeah is crying because he had no rodri what are you talking about bruv do you know what i mean look at all, all the other men you got do you know what i'm saying like brighton are selling all their ballers and not replacing them that man sold Caicedo and Alexis um, McAllister, bro, in the same window mm -hmm. and then had to play in Europe. Yeah. And this is the problem. This is a problem. And they had to play in Europe, bro. And See, realistically, that midfield could have been Basuma, yeah. Caicedo and McAllister. You know how busted that is? And then you got, you've even got Pascal Gross in there. Man, I don't know yeah. about Pascal Gross is a baller, you know? There you go. I really know about Pascal Gross. But this, but this is it. And then all of a sudden, yeah, Pep gets some... They're not even average players, yeah, because like, as much as Doku shit, yeah, there's loads of teams in the, in the lower parts of the league that would take him. Same goes for Nunes. Same goes for Kovacic, bro. Like, these men are not shit players, but they're not the worldies that they had before. And all of a sudden, the team looks worse, bro. What a shock. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I, and, and this I, is the I, thing. I do, though, I do think though with the Zerbi, though, as I said, I, I get, it gives me the Southampton vibes with Poch. I, that's why I need the Zerbi to go to a top team. Like, you know how we discussed last week? Nah, I mean, Southampton, Poch had ballers. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Same thing. They nah, no, no. Nah, nah. Man had Sadio Mane's and these men. Like, my man yeah, didn't bro. have no... Bro, Brighton ain't got no Mane's. No, no, no. Mane, Mane is in a negative. Mane is different. But I'm saying that Southampton were a team that kept losing their players year in, year out. Okay, having... yeah. Oh, I was about to say, I thought you meant the level of the team because that Southampton team no, was better than Brian. No, 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 no. I'm, right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? Mm. Now, so I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking like having to lose their best players with a Fact. good tactical manager. Because let's be honest, Poch was good tactically at Southampton and did carry it over to Tottenham quite well. But mm. again, limitations when you don't get what you want from the board, especially mm. to maintain what you want to maintain. I believe if Tottenham were backed for at least maybe one or two more years, because remember, Tottenham also had to go and sell Walker, and that like if they were back to little yeah, more, Tottenham was selling, yeah, yeah, they were selling. Poch weren't doing like, nothing though. And that's I, what can't I, wanna, lie. I don't get me wrong, them at PSG and that like, they killed, they killed. Man, they should have won that Champions but, League. You lot were shit, bruv. But Tottenham won that day. But again, but we again, her, you know, you know how it goes, bro. Heritage, bro. And we and yeah. our shit, our shit was actually better than Tottenham's ceiling if uh, you really yeah. put down how good that Liverpool team was. So. When we're talking about the Zerbi, I really want the Zerbi to move to a big club. Yeah, he needs it. I, I, like, he needs it now because, bro, if a man's only going to get his players sucked for a pause, like, for so long, fam. Like, it can only happen for so long and he needs to get the move. Certain moves will make and break you, in it. Poch, PSG killed him. They killed him, bro. 
They done yeah, him off. killed his reputation. This, this Chelsea stint's not doing even worse. Just yeah, even worse. This, this Chelsea off. stint's not doing well, but I, I, I don't know, bro. I think Poch's coaching style is outdated, bro. Like, I think that Poch can only coach the way he coaches now if he's got top players like, like Carlo and that. He needs top players, innit? Because he's more of a man manager than a tactician, innit? And <clears throat> he's not doing it for me. But now, when I look at when I look at the city situation now, bro, I'll be real. It's like people just think you can't critique Pep, bro. And you can. This is just what it is. And you can, bro. You know what I mean? Like, man's talking about how we lost Rodri. Look at the amount of ballers that Liverpool lost, and they still fist them up. And that is it. And and this and this is what it is. So I just think in the modern game, people underestimate the importance of players. And I think most of the time, yeah, Pep don't get the best out of his players. But because he's got better players than everyone else in his system, he gets away with it. He does get the best out of certain players, but the players he needs him to get the best out I, of. I don't think we're seeing... I can't tell you a Man City player, apart from Erling Haaland, yeah, that I can... Or KDB, the two players that are getting carried. I can't say you're getting the best out of them, bro. I, it's about I now can't. Or, or over time? Now, bro, you're not getting the best out of Bernardo Silva. I don't think we've ever seen the best of Bernardo Silva at Man City because he's never really been allowed to play in the areas that he wants to play in. He's been used on the wing a lot when really he should be a free roaming player to be able to get on the ball and do whatever he wants. Yeah, he doesn't have that. Foden, we ain't seen the best Phil Foden. I think we might see the best Phil Foden in years to come, but we ain't really seen it right now, bro. Like, just bro, Mavericks just shouldn't play for Pep. It's that simple, bro. Unless you're Messi, bro. Like, no one else is allowed to just play, blood. No, no one's allowed to just play. By the way, I don't know if you saw the breaking news. So to throw this in there, because I just I've seen it. I've seen it in the chat. I have to double check it now. You know, Tonali is finished. Man said some 50 certain accounts, but what was that? I don't understand what happened. Finished. Let me read it because I it's hold on. I need to find it again. Someone in the chat bring it up if you can as well. So yeah, someone put it in there, but I don't understand it. Hold on, I'm just quickly gonna reread it again. I just read it earlier. I thought I thought it was just that. Uh, do you know what I originally thought? He initially was? got 10 months, but then what are they saying yeah, they add into it? I, I thought it was he would like we were just told what he'd done in for the 10 months anyway. I just thought it was just, you know, you know, when they say more in detail what you actually got done for the final yeah. deal. I thought it was that. Um uh, he goes, Tonali has now been charged by the FA with 50 offenses of placing bets earlier this season. It happened between August 12th, 2023, and October of the 12th. Tonali has already been bad for 10 months for betting offences while in Italy. So that's he's, 50 more. He's 50 more. He's. Yeah. Yeah, he's pissed. Bro. He's going to get sued as well. He's done. The Newcastle going to sue him, bro. He is done. Like, Newcastle going to sue him still. Because done, 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 they're going to want their money back. Hey. You reckon Milan knew this? Milan Hondo knew this. Of course they did. They Hondo knew this. Milan must have known this, right? They must have known that. Fuck you me. You think Milan, bro? bro you think Milan didn't know this? That's crazy, you know. They sold him for 70 M's. Them man are laughing and took Ruben off this cheek on the Ruben off this cheek on the cheek. They, they yeah. got him on the cheek and made 70 M's. Bro, that's crazy, bro. What do you mean? He's finished, bro. Fuck you, yeah, no, man. Oh, well. Do you know what I'm saying? The that's, game is the game, I mean, innit? Uh, I didn't bring it up because I thought it was just more a more in-depth look at what he's done. Yeah, that's nasty. Nah, no, yeah, it's uh, nasty, people. Hey, have you scheduled your stream already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My stream scheduled, yeah. There, Why so. can't I see it, blood? I'm trying to read it. Uh, you might have to refresh it. It's, it should be there, so. Uh, Yellowy, orangey background. Same yeah, yeah, I know, I know it, but it's not coming up, bro. Hold on. Not to refresh this, though. That is crazy. But yo, big up everyone in, in the chat. Make sure you run up the the lights, obviously. And uh, hey, bro, obviously you man saw saw the madness that um Yamal's doing right now, bro. I can't lie, yeah. I know, hey, bro. Listen, if he keeps playing the football the way he's playing, yeah, I can't lie. He might be that guy still. He might be that guy. I'm not gonna lie, because I know man, man love the pace merchants, man love the Mbappe's and that. But bro, you see the way that Yamal's gliding, yeah. 
right now, blood. He's moving oh, like right. a real. He's moving like a real skin man, bro. Is man's look. Is he six? Man's man is looking like. Man's got this weird lanky dribble thing, yeah. Like, it's like, it's mad. I can't even lie. Man's got the Velcro dribble. You know what I mean? The real Velcro oh, dribble. That's the very, the Velcro dribble is crazy. That's mad. That one where the ball's just stuck to his feet, bro. Not not the kick and run Mbappe dribble, bro. That these man. I know these man were gassing. I remember I was against Germany and Mbappe done. That little forced, you know, that little four step over he does, then he kicks it and runs off here, yeah, and bare people yeah, get, yeah, yeah. get gassed over it. Okay, so some, some stiff step over, some four step over, and that, yeah, bruv. Listen, man, I want to see Velcro blood. Listen, oh my days, this ute was moving mad, bro. That's a real dribbler. I'm not talking about these forced dribbles where man that like, do step overs for no reason, like Bellingham and that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you'll have no one near him yet, and you'll step over the ball and then turn around, and people will say, "Oh, runs, you see him Bellingham's tech, bruv." Listen, that red plays like he's got ankle weights on, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Man ain't trying to tell me tech and Bellingham in the same, in the same sentence, blood. Man like Black Tomine and that. He nah, he's fucking useless. So it just is what it is, bro. Your mouth's different. Your mouth's different, bro. I can't even lie, bro. He might be next up, yeah, if he keeps doing what he's doing because it's it's crazy right now. You know he's too young to be on FIFA. <laughs> oh, is that why? That's crazy. Too, too young to be on FIFA. It's not on FIFA. Well, you got to be over eighteen. I think it's. I, I don't know if it's over semi. There's a thing that like I wanted to see his FIFA rating one time, see if it was dust on mm. dust rating. I couldn't. It's not there. He's not on FIFA. Not yeah. FIFA. Like, it's, yeah, it's that's crazy. crazy. By the way, did it? Did it? Did it pattern? By the way, or is it? Did, um, did yeah, yeah, I've done it. No, I've done it. Oh, I've done it. So. Because I've got, because I've got, I've probably, sh- the guy I've got needs to, needs to shoot off. I'm probably going to have to, probably going to have to shoot in a second if that's hard. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man's going to redirect over there. But yeah, trust me, people. I've been, I've been keeping an eye, especially in that international break on Yamal, yeah. And he looks, he looks sturdy. I can't lie. He looks fucking sturdy, bro. So, it's one of them ones where we just, we need to keep an eye on that one. Do you know what I'm saying? But he looks surty, bruv. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't lie. I wasn't on this Holland Mbappe, Ballon d'Or, like, duo. And now they're trying to talk, flipping Bellingham into some Ballon d'Or chat when he's dead food. So, do you know what I mean? Hopefully, let's see if Yamal gets his flowers, in it, Like, or if he's another one of them guys that... Yeah, but we've seen Yamal. So we've seen the Bojans. We've seen it all. So, hopefully... Yeah, exactly. Like, the we'll see in it. We'll see yeah. if he keeps playing the way he's playing. Let's see if they try to rub him out like they rubbed out Neymar in it. Or oh, I feel like it, oh, that just gave me a headache, fam. That guy was yeah. so cold. That that was crazy. Brojan as well. Man even had his hair like Messi. Fuck. Yeah, no, right? and yeah. and and the um and the other the Santos Giovanni as well. Giovanni. What? Wait, wait. The bait. And one. then he ended Fatty. up at Stoke. No, no. We've, we've the obvious one. Fatty. And Fatty, literally. And Fatty as well. Oh my days. And and that, was, bro, that, was, that was just last year. Yeah, facts. Yeah, you know Barcelona. Yeah, we Barney. need to do that failed, failed wonder kids Barcelona edition. There's bag of them. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, but but I'll, I'll say run that next week, but obviously we're gonna yeah. have uh, there's gonna be bare football to talk about. There's gonna about. be bare football to talk about. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So but we got through it. We got listen, people, we got through the international break, we made it. Facts, you know, like that, and it's wavy this weekend. We got bare football. I'm gonna be watching the Liverpool game, I'm watching the City Arsenal game. Obviously, we got the United game as well. It's active, people. Um, you lot make sure you subscribe to um Monts' channel. The link is in the title. Man's gonna yeah. redirect you guys over to his show yeah. now. It's gonna yeah. be a quick thing, by the way. Quick show, it's gonna be about 40 minutes. It's me and Kaz doing the combined 11. We're also gonna do the combined 11 again, but with so this is the rivals version of the City Arsenal combined 11. And then tomorrow is gonna be with actual Arsenal and City fans for their perspective of a combined 11. It's gonna be about 40 minutes long. And yeah, my man's two goals off of 9k, 1.2k obviously off of 10k, and it's growing fast. So again, that's a big thanks to, to yourself, France, and obviously the, the community here that's showing my enough love. Bear love since man started doing these shows, man. So. Come on, bro. Nah, nah. It's all blessed. Do you know what I mean? So you lot, make sure you smash the like when you head over there. And I'll see you guys back here at 7 for Red Talk with Musa. Big up, people. Yeah.